just lost without Lofton. The tribe trio of Alomar, Ramirez, and Toby have to pick up the slack till Kitty comes back. The Blue Jays are flying. A renewed Raul Mondesi joins the Toronto Thunder Club of Delgado, Cruz, and Big Bat Tony Batista. What a night for long ball hitters. Undefeated Chuck Finley takes the mound against David Wells in the dangerous Toronto Dome. Burke Sportsman welcomes you north of the border. Sky Dome in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. The Indians, swept by the Yankees at home, have lost four in a row. Blue Jays come back from a five and four nine game road trip. Indians second place. In the American League Central, Blue Jays fourth place in the East. As we welcome you to Baseball Thursday, I'm Kenny Albert. I'll be joined in just a moment by Jeff Torborg. These are some of the stories we'll be talking about for you throughout tonight's telecast. Indians manager Charlie Manuel will go under the knife tomorrow. We'll miss the next 10 days to two weeks, so Grady Little will take his place in the Cleveland dugout. Blue Jays one game under 500 following last night's loss to the White Sox in Chicago. And David Wells terrific throughout his major league career, 11-3 against the Indians. As we welcome in Jeff Torborg, Jeff, tremendous pitching matchup. Wells for the Blue Jays, Chuck Finley for the Tribe. Well, Kenny, you've got two red-hot left-handers. Finley has been unbelievable. His last three starts in 24 innings, his earned run average is only 0.73. That's incredible. The problem he might have is, in his career, he's never been very successful here, one and four at Sky Dome. David Wells on the other side of the field, also red-hot, the Indian killer. Problem he might have is a tender back. But two of the top three hitters against him in the Cleveland uh, organization are on the DL. Sandy Alomar, who has bat 429 in his career against David Wells and Kenny Lofton at 321, will both not play tonight. Wells and Finley, the Blue Jays and the Indians coming up next from Toronto on Fox Sportsnet Baseball Thursday. in Toronto as we get set for the Blue Jays and the Indians their first meeting of the year 2000 and for the Cleveland Indians with a record of 13 and 11 they are 9 and 3 on the road Holbert Cabrera will lead things off the center fielder followed by shortstop Omar Vizquel ex-Blue Jay Roberto Alomar bats third Manny Ramirez who leads the Indians with 21 RBIs in the cleanup spot Travis Prime in the DH tonight will bat fifth then the first baseman, Richie Sexton, and the bottom of the order, third baseman Enrique Wilson, left fielder Alex Ramirez, and catcher Einar Diaz against 36-year-old left-hander David Wells. Well, this guy definitely knows how to pitch. He's got two types of fastballs. He can get it up to the mid-90s. Got a big curveball, tight slider, throws a changeup only to right-handers, but great control of all his pitches. Wells, 4-1, and one, earned run average of 3.44. In the field for the Blue Jays, Carlos Delgado at first. Homer Bush, the former Yankee, at second. The third baseman is Tony Batista. Alex Gonzalez at shortstop. In the outfield, the left fielder, the rookie, playing his second game, Andy Thompson, for the injured Shannon Stewart. Jose Cruz, Jr., in center. And the right fielder, the ex-Dodger, Raul Mondesi. Alberto Castillo behind the plate for Castillo, his 10th start. Five have come with David Wells on the mound. As Holbert Cabrera steps in and takes ball one. Cabrera, Vizquel, and Alomar for the Indians here in the first inning, playing without their manager, Charlie Manuel, who will undergo his second colon surgery in the last two months tomorrow and will miss the next 10 days to two weeks. So the bench coach, Grady Little, who spent the last three years as the Boston Red Sox bench coach, is in charge, although Manuel did make out the lineup card. But it's Grady Little's team, Jeff, for the next two weeks. Well, it can be a difficult situation, too, Kenny, when you think about it. This Indian team is struggling already, and then to have their leader out of there, it's got to hurt a little bit. 
The 2-1 foul back. Two balls, two strikes to the leadoff man, Cabrera, who is one for nine since his recall from Buffalo. The Indians' top two center fielders are on the DL, both Kenny Lofton and Jacob Cruz. Cabrera, outstanding spring training for the Indians. Batted 460 in March. But they did not have any room on the roster. So he was sent down to AAA Buffalo. Wells just missing on the inside corner. And the count is full. Well, it's very important that Cabrera sets the table for this Indian team. The problem is that they are not doing the job offensively. And that doesn't sound at all like the story we know about the Indians. But the front end of the order without Lofton just does not look the same, obviously. The payoff pitch from Wells popped up. Foul territory. Not enough room for Castillo or Delgado. So Cabrera stays alive. Yeah, the Indians 12th in the American League in batting. 263 average. They are last in hits. 12th in runs. That is incredible when you look at their lineup. It makes you say, hey, what's happened here? Especially after last year, they were number two in the American League in hitting. But the front end of their order last year made so much happen. And when you don't have that catalyst at the front end of the order, the number one guy, you have problems. Will this curve foul? No. It's a fair ball. Extra bases for Cabrera. Rounding second on his way to third. Mondesi had some trouble with it in right field. And Cabrera with a leadoff triple. Now one of the things that surprised you a little bit in this at bat is not that Cabrera hit the ball, but that David Wells went deep into the count to the leadoff hitter. We talked about David Wells with great control. And you'll take a look here now at a full count swing. Now here's the pitch. It's up in the strike zone. And it's just down the right field line. It is almost perfectly put out there because Mondesi can run, and he's a good outfielder, but he can't do much about this. It's almost right in the out, right in that corner, in the right field corner. And as it was, the ball bounced against the fence and bounced by him. Now Jim Fergosi is out with Wally Bell, the first base umpire, arguing about where that ball bounced. He's asking for the other umpires to confer on us just to see where this ball might have bounced. Now, obviously, the ball is fair, but he wants to know where it bounces. And here it bounces back. Now, Mondesi did not know where the ball went, so you can see him dig it out of the corner. And from this replay, there was, uh, it didn't hit anything. It didn't hit over the fence. It didn't hit that foul pole. It hit against the fence and bounced back, and, and no fans were out there to interfere with it. But I, I will venture to say that from where Jim Pergosi was sitting in the dugout, it looked like maybe the ball bounced up and hit the foul screen on the, on the foul pole, but it did not after we looked at the replay. Cabrera is on third following his leadoff triple as the shortstop Omar Vizquel steps in. Switch hitter batting right-handed against Wells. He's only 6 for 36 lifetime against David Wells as Vizquel takes strike one. Well, you take a look at this batting average. Last year is 100 points higher, 333. Vizquel has been struggling. He's only two for his last 23. As this one deflects off the glove of Batista. The scale is safe. Cabrera holds it third. Cabrera didn't quite know what to do here. After the ball went off of Batista's glove, it looked like he was going to break for home. And then he thought better of it. Here's Batista, last year's shortstop, going for the ball. He kind of deflects it a little bit. Gonzalez got to take the throw and, and throw it on the run as Vizquel is hustling down the first base line. Error charge to Batista, his fifth of the year. So the Indians with first and third, nobody out. For the former Blue Jay, Roberto Alomar, who spent five years here in Toronto. Alomar only two for his last 23. As you see, 0 for his last 14. He's had some problems, a sore neck last month. Now a sore left elbow that has bothered him at the plate. As Roberto takes ball one. All 
Uh, Robbie Alomar really came of age when he was traded from San Diego to the Blue Jays with two world championship ball clubs up here. He just was sensational here. In the air, shallow left. The left fielder Thompson called off by the shortstop, Gonzalez, for the first out. You know, I was just thinking, Kenny, what you were talking about, about Robbie Alomar with his sordid injuries. He was all banged up for a couple of the years that he played with the Orioles. And in fact, one of those years, he couldn't even hit right-handed because it was affecting his shoulder. And when we talked with him about two weeks ago, he was saying that he had a stiff neck. You know, if you in this game are tight and don't quite get your hands through, and you can see him kind of even feeling, he just knew he didn't get the head of the bat out front. You can see him wince a little bit. One away, runners on the corners. For the right fielder, Manny Ramirez. Ramirez takes ball one, eight for 30 lifetime against David Wells for the home run. Ramirez this year, six home runs, 21 runs batted in. The numbers last year, 44 and 165. Hmm. Well, when you have a hitter of this ability, anytime you can just see him get red hot, even though his numbers are not real good at this point, at least not for him. Anything can happen. You can see David Wells is trying to make sure that he keeps Omar Vizquel close at first base. Vizquel is a stolen base threat. As you can see, the scatter report on Ramirez is extremely strong. Likes the ball out over the plate, get powered all fields. And the good part, which made him a good average hitter over his whole career, he's not afraid to take everything to right field as he ha if he has to. There goes Vizquel. Heading home is Cabrera. And the Indians have taken a one nothing lead. Kenny, when was the last time you ever saw the Indians try to pull a double steal with Manny Ramirez at the plate? They're big bomber. But they have been struggling offensively, and Grady Little decided to try something here. And here goes Vizquel. He really gets picked off here. Delgado showed a second with the minute the throw went to first base, Cabrera headed for the plate. And the throw home was late. So a double steal, Cabrera steals home. One up in Cleveland. The one out to Ramirez, foul back, one and one. You know, sometimes, and I'm not saying this has happened to the Indians because I know they are struggling this at this point, and that can happen. A team can collectively go into a slump. But sometimes when you're a big power hitting team and your offense has been dominant, sometimes the tendency for the whole team is to sit back and wait for the long ball. Well, there are times where maybe you've got to shake it up a little bit and try to make them run just a little. And in that case, that could have been a big mistake because Omar Vizquel got picked off. I mean, he was dead meat there. But it was an outstanding reaction by the third base coach, Jim Riggleman, and the young Cabrera reacting. The minute the throw went to first base from Wells, he took off for home. And by then, Alex Gonzalez's return throw to the plate was too late. The last Indian to steal home, Julio Franco, back in July of 97 in Minnesota, nearly three years ago. One one to Ramirez, now two balls, one strike. I will say it again, there are very few times that when you have a big producing type of hitter at the plate that you try any trick plays, but for the Indians who, as you mentioned earlier, Kenny, have been struggling offensively. Maybe it was their feeling, hey, we better do something here. We got to get something moving. And David Wells did all he could do. He made a nice pickoff throw and had Vizquel dead to rights. But the reaction basically by the runner at third base was what made that play work. Vizquel, the runner on second, one out, one run in. takes a call strike two. Ian Lamplew is the home plate umpire tonight. Wally Bell working first base. Nani Asanya out at second. Mark Hirschbeck, the third base umpire. Boy, there are two different names and you can remember in the umpiring ranks, two young umpires. Working home plate at second base tonight. 
Wells comes in with the 2-2. And Rivera stays alive with a long foul down the right field line. Now you can take a look at what took place last year in the front end of the order. That's what we were talking about. Lofton, Descal, and Alomar, one, two, and three. They were unbelievable last year. Of course, Kenny Lofton got hurt in the playoffs and came back quicker than anybody thought he would in spring training. But they're not getting the same kind of production out of the front end of the order, and that affects the rest of the order as well. And the count is now full on Ramirez with Travis Fryman waiting on deck. We've said it so many times in the past. When you have runners on base, it changes the way the pitcher and catcher call and pitch the game. If there is a tendency that you have runners on who can steal bases and embarrass you a little bit, you'll get many more fastballs for the hitters following those base runners in the batting order. You don't get those runners on, it's a little bit different. The payoff pitch, Wells missing on the inside corner. Wells does not walk too many batters. In fact, it is only the fifth walk issued by Wells in his seven starts all season. And he doesn't believe that that was a ball either. I don't know how that ball missed, but David Wells is trying to keep his cool. He knows when he's throwing a strike. See him shake his head slightly? Now he's even muttering to himself. That pitch, I don't know where it missed. I mean, it, it looked like uh, there's a saying in baseball, they'll yell out to the catcher and say, hey, sit behind home plate, will you? Because you caught the ball, you must have been off the plate. First and second for Travis Fryman as he takes ball one. Fryman, one of the hottest Indians at the plate, six for 11 in the Yankee series. And you see his numbers against David Wells. He's the DH tonight. It's only the second game all season. Fryman has not started at third base. In the air, deep right, Mondesi. Back on the warning track, he's got it for the second out as the scale moves over to third. That ball was hit a long way. It was hit hard, but not quite enough out front to get the ball to drive. Travis Fryman has good power. You were mentioned that he has not DH'd very much, but this is a good place to DH. And remember, he had a bad knee last year. He came back from the knee and was really hobbled in the postseason. And if you're going to rest a guy, good idea to rest him on artificial turf if you have a chance to, because this is awfully tough on knees. Two outs, runners on first and third for Richie Section, who takes a strike on the outside corner. Section has really struggled this year. One home run, two RBIs in 21 games. You see his numbers from 1999. 31 and 116. Well, if you remember, even though Richie put up big numbers last year from the power standpoint, he only hit 255. So maybe the thought is that he's just not generating a whole lot of power at this particular point. Uh, he's a big guy. He's at 6'7". You know, there's some holes in a great big swing. Strike call, one and two. But he, too, might be trying too hard. You know, when you change managers, even though you change from one manager to your former hitting coach, a very popular guy. Sometimes guys try too hard to please the new man. Even though Charlie's close to all these guys, they might be trying a little too hard. He got him. Sexton called out on strikes. So Wells gets out of the inning. Having allowed only one run on the steal of home following the leadoff triple by Cabrera. one nothing tribe. Toronto, Kenny Albert, Jeff Torborg, Indians leading 1-0. As we take a look at the Blue Jays batting order, Toronto, a game under 500, 7-7 seven and seven at home, 7-8 and eight on the road. Center fielder Jose Cruz Jr., third of the American League with 10 home runs. Will lead things off, followed by the second baseman, Homer Bush. Raul Mondesi, the right fielder, bats third. Carlos Delgado in the cleanup spot. Tony Batista, the third baseman, will bat fifth. 
And the DH, the former Rookie of the Year with the Twins, Marty Cordova. Andy Thompson, the rookie left fielder, will bat seventh. Then the shortstop, Alex Gonzalez. And the catcher, Alberto Castillo, against 37-year-old left-hander, four-time All-Star, Chuck Fiddling. Well, at six feet six, he gets great downward action. He's got two types of fastballs that he gets into the low 90s. Great big breaking curveball, just like David Wells. Split fingers a diver, just dives. He uses both sides of the plate. This guy really knows how to pitch. Finley 3-0 in five starts. He's third in the American League in earned run average, behind only Pedro Martinez and Hideo Novo. He's second in strikeouts and second in opponent batting average behind Pedro in both categories. Ball one to Jose Cruz, Jr. Cruz off to an outstanding start. Ten home runs. Tied for third of the American League behind Jermaine Dye, who has 12, and Jason Giambi with 11. You recall Cruz as a rookie in 1997 with Seattle and the Blue Jays. Hit a career high up until this point, 26 homers. Now two balls, one strike. Yeah, and then ended up in the minor leagues the following year. It just didn't come together for him. Very talented young man. It's kind of like he lost his confidence and kind of his approach at the plate. That can happen easily. Finley falls behind three and one to the leadoff man Cruz with Homer Bush on deck. When you have a switch hitting outfielder who can run, who has power, you know you got to stay with him and be patient. Strike called. Cruz started down towards first, and the count is full. Now, uh, there's something that happened there that a catcher hates to have happen. On a strike, Diaz dropped the strike, and it makes the umpire look bad, and you might not get a close call if you have a pitch that's very close after this. That's one of the things a catcher's got to try to do, not drop any strikes. In the air, right center, and the catch is made by Cabrera. One away. Defensively, Indians lead the American League. They've committed only 10 errors all season. Richie Sexton at first base. Eight-time gold glover, Roberto Alomar at second. Enrique Wilson gets the start at third. Travis Brown to the DH tonight. Omar Vizquel, seven consecutive gold gloves, is the shortstop. Alex Ramirez in left field. As Homer Bush fouls off the first pitch from Finley, 0-1. Kenny, that was very interesting, that swing that Homer Bush just took. One of the things that Cito Gaston, the former outstanding manager here with the Blue Jays, who's back as the hitting coach, is trying to get Homer to do is to take the ball on the outside part of the plate to right field and pull the ball on the inside part. Homer's been trying to do too much, trying to push everything to right. And there is Cito Gaston. to Bush. High and tight. Two balls, one strike. Bush broke out of an 0-for-20 slump yesterday with a base hit against the Yankees. Batting only 169 on the season. In the air, left center. It's Cabrera again. Two away. two Blue Jays. Finley coming off a 3-2 victory over the Red Sox on Saturday. He struck out seven, so he fell just shy of becoming the first Indians pitcher, Jeff, in 50 years to strike out ten or more in four consecutive games. Well, that's what they got him for. They needed a big stopper. They needed a left-hander who could be considered a Yankee killer if they get that far. One of the problems they've had the last few years, can't get by the Yankees, nor can anybody else for that matter, but Chuck Finley has been so successful against the Yankees especially and the Red Sox. 16 and 9 against the Yankees. The 1-0 to Raul Mondesi. Now two balls, no strikes. Mondesi batting 276 in his first year with the Blue Jays. Tied for fourth in the league with 23 runs scored. Drive left 
field caught by Alex Ramirez. A one, two, three first for Chuck Finley. Indians with a one nothing lead after one from Sky Dome. Brady Little, the Indians bench coach, stepping in as manager for the next week and a half, two weeks for Charlie Manuel, who will undergo his second colon operation over the last two months tomorrow. What a play by Gonzalez. He did a 360 and throws out Enrique Wilson. We spoke with Richie Sexton about his manager, Charlie Manuel, who spent the last six seasons as the Indians hitting coach. And we'll hear from Sexton in just a moment as we take one more look at the spin of the throw by Gonzalez. Boy, I'm glad I wasn't the one calling that play. This is a great play by Gonzalez, and this is one of those turf hops he's throwing. But I just don't know whether that was uh, as much a, an out call as it should have been. It's easy to manage him up here and try to umpire from up here, but uh, boy, that you weren't so sure about that one. to Alex Ramirez. One ball, one strike. Ramirez, the left fielder tonight, his third start of the year. He's two for nine at the plate. Here's the third baseman, Batista. He throws him out, two away. you look to put your sports knowledge to the test then be sure to tune in to the new nightly game show that'll challenge even the most knowledgeable of sports fans sports geniuses weeknights at 6 and 11 on fox sports net hosted by our colleague matt veskersen along with lisa guerrero sports geniuses on fox sports net those are fun shows i watched one of those last night Diaz lifts this one into right. Raul Mondesi makes it look easy. And an easier second inning for David Wells than the first. A 1-2-3 second. Indians with the 1-0 lead here at Sky Dome. Torborg back in Toronto. A look at Blue Jays manager Jim Fregosi. We talked about the Indian struggles, Jeff, at the plate. Blue Jays not much better. Tenth in the American League, batting 273. But how about the disparity, home and road? 307 at home for the Blue Jays, only 240 away from Sky Dome. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Some clubs will, will do that, and then all of a sudden you start thinking when you go into that ballpark, you've got to make sure you make use your signs wisely and so on, you know, you cast dispersions. But sometimes what it is is you're comfortable in your own ballpark. You seem to see the ball better. But how about this Blue Jay club with the ability to hit the long ball? I mean, the big power. They set a record for the organization in spring training for home runs. And then they come back with an unbelievable April. 43 in April, which is a franchise record. They've got some big pop in this lineup. Carlos Delgado at the plate has eight homers, seven of the eight here at home. Cruz leads the way with 10. Delgado and Batista. Eight apiece. A one one from Finley. Now one ball, two strikes. Our top flight XL 2000 home run leaders. Tommy not in the Indians lineup tonight. Now two and two on Delgado. Delgado has faced Finley before. Interleague play, Dodgers and the Angels, and he's only two for 17 against the four-time All-Star with a homer. Two and two, Delgado leading off for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the second inning. And the count is now full. Tony Batista is waiting on deck for the Blue Jays. Back home following a nine-game road trip. They won two of three in Oakland. Lost two of three in New York, one two of three in Chicago. Jack swing, Delgado held up, and the 
Blue Jays have their first base runner. You know, most pitchers know who in the lineup they don't want to beat them, and they'll be very careful with them. And obviously, Delgado is the guy that Finley has kept his eye on. When you think about what Delgado did last year with the 44 home runs, uh, everybody in baseball says, okay, watch out for that lineup. Even though it's tough throughout the lineup, the guy you want to worry about most is Delgado. And veteran pitchers will do that. Uh, inexperienced, younger pitchers don't think much about that. They'll go after everybody the same way. But I'll tell you, this guy is dangerous with this awkward-looking stance that really works for him. Batista with a shot down the left field line. Heading for second. And he is safe. Well, Kenny, we were talking about Tony Batista, the kind of stance he has, which is very strange. He faces the pitcher, hands are in front of his head, but he gets his hands back ready to hit. And he seems like he's able to time pitch as well. And it was a very good bunch of base running that he did, too, coming around second base and going for third. Now, here's the pitch. The ball is in the middle of the plate. You see, Batista got his hands up, got the head of the bat out, and hit the ball down the left field line. And out of the box, it's, he's got his head down. It doesn't look like he's pouring it on, but it looks like he knows what he's going to try to do. And that's your talk about hitting the ball in front of the plate. As he got that ball out in front, hooked it down the line. Here's Marty Cordova with runners on second and third, and he takes a call strike. For Tony Batista, his 11th double, his 19th extra base hit, second in the league in both categories. Well, with that awkward-looking stance, you sometimes wonder, how do we pitch this guy? It looks like you've got to pitch him hard in as much as you can. Nice block by Diaz, one and one. Boy, you're not kidding. That's a run. So often, catchers, uh, the only thing they get credit for are pass balls when the ball gets behind, be, uh, past them. And on this particular play, he got down and blocked this play. Watch this. Both knees came down. He missed it with a glove, but he blocked it with a shin guard. But you try to do a square up in front of it, try to catch it if you can, but block behind. And Diaz just saved a run. Diaz filling in for the injured Sandy Alomar Jr., who should return in their next series down in Florida rehabbing one and two on Marty Cordova nobody out bottom of the second inning runners on second and third Delgado who walked is now the runner on third and Batista who doubled he is taking the lead off second now you can see the grip now that's with with the seam grip they call it a two seam grip one, two, now two balls, two strikes. Uh, Cordova working on a five-game hitting streak. Kenny hit a home run last night against the White Sox, and it was out over the plate, and he hit it the other way. So you can see Chuck Finley's philosophy here is he wants to keep the ball hard in on him if he can. And he just missed with that two-seam fastball inside. Hard foul down the left field line. So the count remains two balls, two strikes. There's Delgado. And Batista. Now, a lot of people don't understand why the base runner at third base leads off a third base in foul ground. That's one of the reasons right there. If he gets drilled with a ball, he's not out. If he's in fair ground and gets hit with a ball, he's out. Finley comes in with the 2-2. And the count is now full. With the rookie Andy Thompson on deck. Delgado with the leadoff walk. 90 feet away from tying the game. Interesting, we're talking about the runner at third base, Delgado. He takes his lead in foul ground, but when he goes back to the base, he goes back along the line or in fair ground so that he shields from any throw pickoff attempt to the third baseman. Playoff pitch fouled off. Well, you see Delgado down the third baseline. He'll go and touch the base now, and then he'll take his lead off in this area. Maybe not that far. But then when he goes back, he curls back in the line so that any throw from the catcher might hit him in the back or is diverted over into this area here. 
but they get what you call basically a walking lead off the third base and they come in as the pitcher delivers the ball and hit on their right foot and stop and be ready to go either way. Another foul. Just watching Finley work. We talked about it in the scouting report that he really works in and out both sides of the plate. And he's been trying to work Cordova inside, and the one pitch he made a mistake with was an off-speed pitch he left in the middle of the plate down, and that was that rocket that went down the third baseline. Now, what you just saw now, Diaz, by circling with his finger, said, I want to do it again. I want to get the signs again, because there's a runner at second base. And any time you see him look to either thigh, that is giving location where he wants it, in or out. They're going in now. It's ball four, second walk of the inning. Issued by Finley. And the bases are loaded with no outs. Well, Jeff, uh, the last word. Jim Rome and his guests discuss beam balls and their place in Major League Baseball. Rome will be joined by Tigers manager Phil Garner and Fox Sports Net Major League Baseball analyst Kevin Kennedy, former manager of the Red Sox and the Rangers. That's tonight. At 11.30 on Fox Sportsnet, check local listings. Fourth at bat of the season and of his major league career for left fielder Andy Thompson, who was called up from Syracuse earlier this week where he was batting 241. His wife, Christine, is due any day. And when he received the call from the Blue Jays' front office, he thought it was Christine calling from Madison, Wisconsin, telling him, and she went into labor. In fact, when Andy called his wife to tell her about the promotion, he said he almost put her into labor. <laughs> That's true, but what a thrill it is to have happenings in your life. Obviously, the more important is that the... But for Andy Thompson to come to the big leagues in an opportunity, it takes a swing in the big leagues. That's exciting time in a young person's life. Comes up with the bases loaded. Nobody out. And the count now. Two balls, one strike. 24 years of age. Thompson recalled when the Blue Jays placed Shannon Stewart on the 15-day disabled list. Stewart had missed 11 games with a hamstring injury. Came back on Friday. And then re-injured the hamstring. So he was placed on the DL. Thompson bounces it back to the screen. Two and two. Now just watching this young guy. He's big, strong kid. 6'3", 215. Normally when somebody comes to the big leagues and gets a chance to play, when they go up to the plate, you know, the butterflies are moving around in the stomach pretty well. And, and what happens is you come out of your, your way of swinging the bat. You'll want to hit anything that looks good. Now, don't put... But she also has a tendency to chase bad balls. Another nice block by Diaz, and the count is full. Finley has already walked to this inning. Sandwiched in between the double by Batista. Alex Gonzalez waiting on deck. Nobody out in the Blue Jays' second. Full count, bases loaded. Well, if you're young Andy Thompson, you have to sit on a fastball here and not get full. I mean, not get that ball run back at you, boy. You've got to be ready to get the head of the bat out of the fastball. If he throws him a breaking ball here and throws him for a strike, he's got no chance. But he can't miss a fastball. That's it in his mind. Thompson, base hit right field. His first career hit. And his first major league run batted in. Now Kenny got that fastball up and out over the plate and hit it to right field. First major league hit. The umpire will call for the ball now from Chuck Finley, and they will take the ball and roll it into the Blue Jay dugout. And normally the trainers will write and scribe on it the date and who it was off and so on. It's a, it's a memento for life for Andy Thompson. First major league hit. An RBI on it. Not bad. Who did your first major league hit come against? 
Carlton Willie, and I think they released him the next day. <laughs> but he, he was a, a fine major league pitcher, and I, of course I broke the bat, got a little bloop to left, and the next day it looked like a line drive. You still have the ball? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Bases still loaded as Alex Gonzalez fouls one back behind first base. 0 and 1. Penny, this is a big start for Finley. We've been talking about how red hot he's been, but his club has not been. And when you are the man, you sign a big contract, you join a new club, you have got to stop the losing streak. And he is in deep trouble right here. He has been just missing with some of his off-speed pitches and then bouncing a lot of others. Einar Diaz has saved him two runs already. Another block by Diaz. Well, I was starting to say before, there is no category for catchers where you save runs on balls in the dirt. There is a pass ball when it gets by you, and it's, you're saying you have been told that you should have caught it. In the meantime, this young catcher has just saved three runs from scoring. And who knows, maybe more, because guys would move up if it got by him. This will be the 25th pitch this inning by Chuck Finley. Still nobody out. 1-1. One, one. Now back behind home plate. One ball, two strikes on Alex Gonzalez. With the bases loaded, Alberto Castillo on deck. Now that was one of the best pitches Chuck Finley has thrown for action. That ball was away from Alex Gonzalez, and it was tailing away. It had action. It's almost like he's been pounding, pounding, pounding inside and then throwing a breaking ball in the dirt, but has not made a good pitch low and away yet. Finley missing inside, two and two. Gonzalez batting only 176 in his career with the bases full. The 2-2, two -two, a cold strike three. Gonzalez down on strikes, first strike out of the game. 43rd of the season, second of the American League for Chuck Finley. Boy, now this was a big at bat for Chuck Finley. He needed this one here. And he made some great pitches, but he also got a great deal of help from his catcher. Now here's his sequence. That ball is up and away. Now here's the ball in the dirt, the breaking ball that Diaz blocked. There's a good tailing fastball. This pitch misses. That's a little cutter, and this one doesn't miss. So one away as Castillo steps in with the bases full and takes ball one. Castillo batting 233. Spent last year with the St. Louis Cardinals after four seasons with the Mets. Came over in the Pat Hinkin deal from the Cardinals. Bases full of Blue Jays. Batista the runner on third. Cordova on at second. Thompson runner on first. Can he even the veteran pitchers will overthrow at times. They want to do so well. And they really want to throw the best pitch they can. Chuck Finley is overthrown right now. That's why so many balls are in the dirt. You saw a real high pitch he threw a couple of hitters ago. That was a curveball that he really held on to and, and kind of what they say you're wrapping it. He's overthrowing right now. And he needed that strikeout with Gonzalez. Now we'll see what he does in this situation with Castillo. See, there's another one. See him spin way off the mound over to the right side a little bit. He is really trying to throw a little too hard. David Wells threw five pitches in the top of the second. Finley has thrown 30 in the bottom of the inning. Yeah, this is the kind of inning that takes a lot out of you. But you don't care at the time. You've got to get out of it without any more damage if you can, if you're the Indian. Base is loaded, one out. And the 2 1 is fouled off, back behind first base. So the count now two balls, two strikes on Alberto Castillo, the Blue Jays catcher with Jose Cruz Jr. on deck. Well, this whole mess started 
with Delgado getting a walk, leading off the inning. Then another walk sandwiched around a double by Baptista, and you know you got problems because then you don't have a cushion. You can't use all your repertoire. Now you've got to come right at him, and I think what happens is Chuck has been trying to just overthrow. Well, he picks up his second consecutive strikeout. First Gonzalez, now Castillo. Well, that was an outstanding pitch. I think that was his split finger. The bottom fell out of this pitch. Take a look at this. You see, here it comes, and there it goes. And with great arm action, and remember, you got a big guy who's six foot six flying through your vision. So as a hitter, you see this guy with a leg flying up in the air, and now he's just thrown a split finger with great fastball arm action, and it's very difficult to lay off of that. So now two away, base is still loaded for Jose Cruz Jr. Fly to center in the first. Cruz with 10 home runs, all 10 have come against right-handed pitchers. As we check the base runners, Batista on third, Marty Cordova on second, Andy Thompson who drove in the Blue Jays run on at first. Kenny, I almost lost track. I think that's four balls that uh, were stopped by Diaz that saved runs. It might have been five. That's how good he has been. Always worried about this situation. You got the two toughest outs. You can't relax now. Remember the Blue Jays had the bases full with nobody out. It would be quite an accomplishment if Philly gets out of the inning, having allowed only the one run. You're not kidding. Usually when you think you got the bases loaded and none out, you think you're going to at least give up one run. Well, there's a base in here, base hit in here that gave up the one run, still had the bases loaded and none out. You're right. But this is the part, as a manager, you keep telling your pitcher, you got to focus even harder now. The 1-1. One, one. Missing high, two balls, one strike. Now, there's one thing about Finley. He's a big, strong guy. That'll take something out of him, but, and it's, but it's a nice, cool evening here indoors, so that's not going to really burn him out. The key is he's got to get out of this inning. Another block by Diaz. I know. It's incredible to watch what this guy has done. I mean, that is not easy. First of all, you got a guy who's throwing hard. Now he's throwing hard breaking balls in the dirt. Now that makes it doubly more difficult. And Diaz has stayed right with it. For young catchers out there watching, watch him when you see him do it again. If he has another opportunity, watch him take his head right down to the ball. He drives his head down. That makes his body follow. Cruz, the fourth consecutive Blue Jay to come to the plate this inning with the bases loaded. Thompson single. Finley then struck out the next two. The 3 1. Full four. Third walk of the inning. As Finley walks in the second Blue Jays run. Now, Dick Cole, the pitching coach of the Indians, is going to talk to his veteran left hander. I think. I have never seen this young umpire manage, I mean umpire before, Ian Lampelew, and I think he's got kind of a tight strike zone. I'm not saying that these were necessarily not strikes. I don't mean that, or were strikes, but I'm saying some umpires have tighter zones than others. David Wells wasn't real pleased, and Finley wasn't on a couple close calls either. I just wanted to see if Cole said anything to the umpire on the way back. And he hasn't said anything, so it's just sometimes, you know, a strike zone that you get used to with a veteran umpire, then you have a new young umpire that maybe you haven't seen before, and he's got a little tighter zone. The only thing you can ask, both teams ask, is that they're consistent. Stay the same way the whole game for both sides. So the Blue Jays now lead 2-1. to one. Bases loaded for Homer Bush who flies to center his first time up. And this one gets by Diaz. Here's the throw to the plate. Safe. Well, 
as you see the argument going on, Grady Little coming out to argue. Finley got there. The throw was there to beat him, but I think when he threw the tag on, I think he missed the uh, runner. I think he flat out missed the tag. I think this was an outstanding call by this young umpire. Finley's saying, yeah, I was down there making the tag, but I don't think he tagged the runner. I think the runner was in. When he flipped that tag on, I think he missed him. And we've been talking the entire inning about how many nice stops Einar Diaz has made. This ball might have hit on top of the plate and ski out. Hit the plate. Skid it through his legs. The throw beats the runner, but watch Finley's tag. See, he missed him. He missed the tag entirely. I thought that's what I saw. Here comes Cordova. Here comes Finley. The throw beats him, and he swipes back with a tag. He missed it. And Cordova's leg was on the plate. This is a fantastic call by this umpire. There, it looked like he got him, but he missed him. So the Blue Jays lead is now three to one. One one to Homer Bush. Inside, two balls, one strike. Well, that play we were talking so much about Diaz having stopped all the others. That ball skidded off the plate. When the ball hits the top of the plate. It doesn't bounce the same way. That's skidded right between his legs. Oh, another one. Whew, boy, I'll tell you what. If you're catching in this situation, your heart's pounding right now. Because even though you're setting up and giving this pitch selection, you're defending the area now because your pitcher's not real sharp. So you're out there just saying, i got to block anything here. So you're jabbing at strikes even. the 2-1. Bounce foul back behind third base. Two balls, two strikes. Wild pitch by Finley. Only his second this season in six starts. Allowing the third Toronto run to score. This will be his 42nd pitch of the second inning. Base hit left field. One run is in. Here comes Cruz. And the Blue Jays now lead 5-1. to one. A two-run single off the bat of Homer Bush. He moved to second on the throw. Bush came into the game with only three runs batted in over the first 22 games, and he drives in a pair with one swing of the bat. Well, he had a tremendous year last year. As you see this play developing, this is a, a throw that's offline from Alex Ramirez. That wasn't even close. I thought there was going to be a play at the plate. Throw from the left fielder, Alex Ramirez, is way over in the middle of the diamond, allowing the second run to score. But... Homer Bush has been struggling. He was injured for a while, but this kid was a big-time contributor to this ball club last year. And his hitting coach has been trying to get him to go back to pulling the ball in the inner part of the plate, which he did there. Bush goes. And he is thrown out, attempting to steal third. A bullet of a throw from Einar Diaz to finally end the inning. But the Blue Jays score five runs on three hits, three walks, and a wild pitch. And they lead the Indians after two, five to one. Joe, Kenny Albert, Jeff Toborg, as we move to the third inning, a five-run second for the Blue Jays and quite an inning for Indians catcher Einar Diaz. Boy, he did everything he could to help his battery mate Chuck Finley. Getting out of the inning by throwing a guy out at third base. Homer Bush trying to steal third in the middle of the order. That's not a smart move. But Diaz was not caught asleep, and he made a perfect throw to third base to get his club off the field. Cabrera takes strike one from David Wells, who has retired five consecutive Indians. He allowed a leadoff triple to Cabrera in the first inning, and Cabrera then stole home on the double steal for the Indians run. Top of the order, Cabrera, Vizquel, and Alabar here in the third for the Indians. Foul 
bat, one and two. The Indians have lost four in a row. They scored only 16 runs during their six-game homestand against the Red Sox and the Yankees. Down ball to the second baseman, and Bush throws out Cabrera, one away. Well, Kenny, we've been talking about what an outstanding job Minor Diaz has done, and there's his first block. Remember, these, all these blocks were a runner at third base. If he doesn't block them, they score. There's four of them. There's the one that hits on home plate and slides through his legs. And as that turned out, he really got the ball back to the plate in time to get the runner. It was just a missed tag. So Diaz, in one inning, really did all he possibly could to help his team. One ball, no strike count on Omar Vizquel. Now one and one, Vizquel reached on an error by the third baseman Batista back in the first inning. Also stole second during that double steal, which allowed Cabrera to steal home. Strike called, one and two. Vizquel only two for his last 24. Struggling at the plate, as are most of the Indians. Lifts this one into left, coming on to make the tap. The catch is Thompson for the second out. So two away, and the Indians third. Second inning, he allowed five runs on three hits. He walked three, and now he is right back out there after David Wells retired the Indians in the third on nine pitches. Yeah, he hardly got a chance to catch his breath. So what he's got to do is throw strikes. He's got to try to make him hit the ball right now. And the most difficult thing to do is he's right in the middle of the order. The big bombers, you try to if you try to groove one, they're liable to hit one out of the ballpark. But he's got to try to make them use the outer half of the plate down and make them hit the ball if he can. Remember, Mondesi was at the plate in the second when Bush was thrown out, attempting to steal third. Which was not a good play, and Finley's glad that they tried it. But, yeah, you want to be aggressive on the bases, try to steal the base, and I'm sure the left-handed pitcher on the mound, guys think it's easier to steal third that way. But as you can see, what Finley and Diaz are trying to do now are go down and away from Mondesi. They went down with a fastball and down with a breaking ball. There's Homer. And a couple of the veteran players are talking to him. Here's the 1-2, and Finley strikes out Mondesi. Third strikeout for Chuck Finley. Mondesi, who went through an 0-for-25 slump last week, is 0-for-2 tonight. As Carlos Delgado steps in, you mentioned Delgado let off the Blue Jays second with a walk. And then the floodgates open. Yeah, we were talking at the time, you know, there are guys that you want to be careful of, but it's always a difficult thing to be careful leading off an inning. But so often when you do the statistical analysis of a leadoff walk, how many times it scores, it's incredible how high it is. Ground ball to the right side, backhanded by Sexton. The toss to Finley, two away. This week on Fox Sportsnet, hardcore baseball. As Maury Wills and Tony Womack will discuss the art of base stealing. Womack, the former Pirate, now at the Diamondbacks, three-time defending National League stolen base champion. And Maury Wills, Jeff, your former teammate with the Dodgers, won six consecutive stolen base crowns in the early 60s. Maury Wills does not get the credit or has not gotten the credit he deserves. He belongs in the Hall of Fame. I mean, this guy it was really special. He changed the look of baseball. 104 stolen bases, 1962, MVP in the league. 
He changed the approach, the philosophy of baseball to back to stealing bases again. Maury Wills had over 2,000 hits, captain of a three-time world championship ball club. He was really a special player. Here's Tony Batista, who doubled and scored in the second inning. Maury Wills also joined you this spring training as a guest instructor with the Montreal Expos. Kenny, every time I watch him talk, I, I can't believe how good he is talking about the art of base running. Hard grounder, Enrique Wilson fires across. And Chuck Finley retires the Blue Jays in order in the third, but still trails by the score of 5-1. Toronto, the plaque commemorating Babe Ruth's minor league exploits here in this city. You know, I've been over in that area. I think that's over in the island. In the island where there's a little airport. Babe Ruth made a, a hit everywhere, didn't he? In fact, I wonder if David Wells flies his private plane into that airport. He owns a, a plane with Kirk Gibson, his former teammate with the Detroit Tigers. Well, he is, you know, he really is a student of the history of this game, David Wells. And, of course, he wore that old Babe Ruth hat. Remember that old little tiny, tiny hat, the little different shape hat they used to wear? Yeah, Joe Torre was not too happy about it when Wells wore it out to the mound for a game at Yankee Stadium a couple of years ago. Well, if he had worn it on his perfect game, he would have been real happy with it, but yeah. David Wells is a free spirit, without a doubt. Of course, he might be built a little like Babe. And he's proud of it. <laughs> David Wells is a baseball historian. He is. He really appreciates the history of the game. And he is part of that baseball lore, having thrown a perfect game against the Minnesota Twins back in May of 98 as Manny Ramirez takes a wide turn around first and then heads back. Now this could be a difficult year for Manny Ramirez. Remember, he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. And whether people say it's putting any pressure or not, sometimes you try to do so much. Of course, if he just has a normal year after what we said he had last year, 44 home runs, 165 RBIs. Well, they'll never drive in that many now with this kind of start that they had because nobody's on in front of him. But that free agent year, that option year, can be difficult on some players. Here's Travis Fryman, who fly out to the warning track in right field back in the first inning. As I'm looking at Travis Fryman, he is a hitter that is in a stance position that you don't see much of anymore. This is called a closed stance, where his front foot is closer to the plate than the back foot. In this day and age, you see many more of the, of the wide open stances, exaggerated open stances. See, Fryman has more of a closed stance. Years ago, 15, 20 years ago, this was the stance of choice in those days. Now back to the screen, two and one. And as a catcher, you stand there, and obviously you've gone over before the game with a in a game report on how to pitch particular hitters. But all you have to do is climb behind the plate and watch how our guy digs in. See, Cast Castillo was looking at to see where he dug in because some hitters will move around in the box. Then you take a look at the stance and how they even take the preparatory swing. You have a pretty good idea how to pitch them. away from Wells but the Blue Jays get the force and second now this is a tough play to turn it's a real nice play by Delgado watch him make the play this is not an easy play he stays on the line so he doesn't throw the ball in the back of many years now you see Gonzalez has to throw the ball on the on the run and you've got a pitcher coming over trying to catch the ball on the run as well and it's a little bit of a difficult play if you're going to do anything with this throw it high enough because as the pitcher comes over to cover he can get the ball up above his waist if it's below his waist his level will get all tangled up and fall here's Richie's section who was called out on strikes 
Back in the first inning. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it back behind first base. 0-1. One. one out in the Indians' fourth. Runner first. Score. He was looking down. All right. section falls behind 0 and 2. These are some of the little things we'll do. As he sets up, he's given the preparing to give his sign to the pitcher. He looks to see where the hitter is. Now you'll see him look down and make sure where his feet are. And then before he moves where he wants to go, he'll look up to see if the hitter is looking down at him. Now see, he's watching him step in. Now he might look up to see if Sex Sexton is looking down. Yep, look him look up. Then he slides out. The 0-2. And what a catch by the second baseman, Bush. Racing towards the right field line with Mondesi coming on as well. And the catch was made by Bush. Well, we talked about Homer Bush getting thrown out at third not being a good play. This was a great play. This is great, great athleticism. Now look at the catcher. We were talking about Castillo. Whereas now he's looking up at the pop-up. But when he was preparing before, he would get down, look to see where the hitter's feet were, and then look up before he shifted in his position to give location to see whether, whether the hitter was looking to see at his location or not. See, there's a little trick that catchers will do, too. If they're going to go away sometimes, they'll reach up underneath the hitter and tap their glove around their ear. So the hitter might say, uh-oh, he's up close to me. I can hear him. Castillo just looked in the dugout now, but now he's looking up and he's sliding inside. Wilson with a grounder foul back behind third base. So the count, no balls, two strikes on Enrique Wilson, who was robbed by the shortstop Gonzalez in the second inning, who did a 360 and then threw him out. You now we were just talking about the catch, and without belaboring the subject, there are a lot of little tricks that you're concerned with because some hitters in this game would peek to look at location. Real good hitters in this game would look down to try to get your location. And now time called by the home plate umpire, Ian Lamplu. So if you caught as a catcher a pitcher or a hitter looking down, you would suggest to the hitter that at the time we had Don Drysdale on the mound, he's, you would say, Mr. Drysdale's not happy with you looking down at these pitches. Oh, please go out and tell him I'm not looking for the, the uh, location. You know, <laughs> you have to let him know that yourself. Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> yes. No room for Batista, so the count remains 0-2. But there are so many little subtleties to this game all over the field, but especially behind the plate. You don't want to go out and give your location too soon for fear that the hitter will see it. So, Speaking of, you know, inside part of the game, here's a guy, Tony Batista we were just looking at, has moved from short to third as Castillo was talking to David Wells. But Batista has moved from short where he played last year to third base. That is a tough shift. Because remember, you're much closer to the hitter. So all of a sudden, instead of having room and time to go for a ball, you got to react quickly. The 0-2 from Wells. Now one ball, two strikes. That is real good camera work. You could see on one side the catcher looking up to see if the hitter was looking down. Now he's looking, the catcher's looking at his feet, looking to give the sign to the pitcher. Now he'll look up to make sure that Enrique Wilson is not looking down. Is there a checklist that would go through your mind as a catcher? Well, you kind of know who the hitters are. You know who the ones are who peak, too. But you, this is a habit that you get into. You get down, you watch the hitter, watch how he gets set. Then you look for your pitcher to make sure you're on the same page with your pitcher. Then before you move, then you look up. The 
without giving away too much information, back in your day, who were some of the peakers? Well, Julian Javier, Stan's dad, used to peak with the Cardinals a lot, you know, because he was a great hit and run man. But there were some power hitters who would try to sneak a peak, and you say, uh, 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 no, I don't think so. And there were times, that's when you'd reach up and tap underneath the, the, uh, the guy's head, and then you would slide out, and then the next time, you would slide out and run in. A one, two, and there's a base hit into right field. Holding it second is Fryman. So the Indians have first and second with two outs. Well, this is a nice piece of hitting by Enrique Wilson. They had stayed away, stayed away, stayed away on him. And this ball that from David Wells was just a little bit too much elevated. But a nice piece of hitting. Tough job Enrique Wilson has. And that's coming off the bench and playing sparingly. But he's accepted his role and has done a nice job for the Indians over the last three seasons. So with two away, runners on first and second. Here's Alex Ramirez, who grounded to third his first time up. Would catchers, when they hit, be more apt or less apt to peak? Uh, I guarantee the catcher won't peak. You know, the strange part is, when you're sitting behind the plate looking out at the pitcher, the perspective of the field is one way. The minute you walk up and stand alongside the plate, you wouldn't even think you're in the same ballpark. It's completely different. No, catchers will not peak. They know better. Oh, and two on Alex Ramirez. The Indians trailing 5-1. They have runners on first and second. Two outs here in the top of the fourth inning against David Wells looking to win his fifth game of the year. Pedro Martinez and James Baldwin, who beat the Blue Jays last night, are the only American League pitchers with five victories. Now Wells steps off. You know, we watch so many games as, as fans, as people up in the booth. You don't realize how difficult a game this is, but just watch the intensity and the concentration on the faces. He got him. Castillo with the throw to first. And the Indians strand two in the fourth. Finley and the Cleveland Indians trailing the Toronto Blue Jays 5-1 on Fox Sportsnet. Baseball Thursday from Sky Dome in Toronto. Marty Cordova, Andy Thompson, Alex Gonzalez for the Blue Jays. Here in the fourth. Cordova walked and scored on a wild pitch back in the second inning. One of five Blue Jay runs in the second on three hits, three walks. And the wild pitch. Each team with three base hits. But the Blue Jays lead by four. Well, we talk so much on our telecast how you joke about it with the manager. You know, they say on the manager's tombstone, the walks killed them. But you can't defend a walk. And it gets you in so much trouble, and then it changes the whole look of the game around. Now, Jim Fergosi was real happy with the walks, but Chuck Finley was not. And it, it really limited him to what he was trying to do once the bases were loaded. Bounce to short. Here's the scale across for the first down. We take you back to May 15th, 1981. Indians and the Blue Jays. Wind up. Here it comes. Fly ball, center field. Baby coming on. He's there. He catches it. Nearly 19 years ago, Len Barker of the Indians pitched his perfect game against the Blue Jays. Oh, I remember that. That was a rainy evening. In fact, there was a rain delay. By then, I had been fired as the Indian manager and was a coach for the Yankees listening to that game in the bullpen at Yankee Stadium. 
Lenny Barker, great big right-hander, came over in a trade from Texas. Did you notice who was on the field? It was Mike Hargrove, former Indian manager, was a player then with the Indians. Rick Manning in center field caught the final out mm -hmm. off the bat of Blue Jays catcher Ernie Witt. That was Herb Score we heard announcing it who himself had a great career on the way when he was drilled with a line drive off the bat of Gil McDougal of the Yankees. Almost killed him. And he to this day said that that did not cause his career to take a, a weird turn. He said it was a bad arm after that that did. And there were many people that I had heard when about Herb Score that when he was in the minor leagues with the Indians that he had Sandy Koufax type stuff. Two and two on Andy Thompson, who picked up his first big league hit and RBI in the second inning. And the count is now full with one out in the Blue Jays fourth. Toronto leading Cleveland 5-1. You know, it was interesting when you mentioned that Andy Thompson was hitting only 241 when called up. You're not usually called up when you're hitting 241, maybe 341, but what a thrill for this young guy. And he doesn't get cheated at the plate watching him swing his back. Wilson at third. Two away. Well, Jeff, high stakes, high rollers. But our thoroughbred horses pay the ultimate price. The dark side of horse racing. Sunday at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Check local listings. Chris Myers going deep here on Fox Sports Net. Chuck Finley retired. The Blue Jays in order in the first in the third and now looks to do it in the fourth as Alex Gonzalez fouls off the first pitch but in the second he faced eight Blue Jays five of them crossed the plate that's one of those nightmare innings for any pitcher but especially a veteran who's trying to get his team and his new team for that matter out of a slump something that this club has not seen in a while four game losing streak Blue Jays, though, if you remember, at the end of last season, beat the Indians the last two games of the season. And I believe it was when the Indians were running for home field advantage in the playoffs. Now two to Gonzalez. There's Wilson. Fires across. And a cross section off the bag. Francisco 2 2 in the bottom of the eighth. Armando Benitez on the mound and Bill Miller triples to left center with the bases loaded. All three base runners score. Giants go on to win the game 7 2 over the Mets despite Mike Piazza hitting his sixth home run of the season. Among his three hits, Giants have now won four in a row. Mets have lost four in a row. Well, they gave Gonzalez an infield hit. Remember, the Indians have committed the fewest errors in the American League this year, only 10, none in the last seven games. On foul off the bat of Castillo, 0-1. You know, it's interesting. I thought that was a hit. But also, in the first inning for the Indians, the ball that Vizquel hit, that went under the glove of Batista, I thought that was a hit as well. I mean, I'm not an official scorer. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, if one's a hit, the other's a hit, kind of, if you look at it that way. Oh, and 2 on Castillo, who struck out with the bases loaded in the second inning. one Toronto first of a seven game homestand for the Blue Jays starting tonight they will play 14 of 17 here at home and they always seem to be tough here they have forever ever since they moved into this beautiful ballpark you know 1989 I was managing in the visiting dugout in the last game ever played at Exhibition Stadium a walk off home run by George Bell off of Bobby Thigpen and we closed the place Wow. 
funny. I about laughed here. I'm just thinking. We close that stadium, and we open brand new Comiskey Field. Comiskey Park, I should say. The new Comiskey Park with a 16 to nothing loss. The Frank Sinatra? That Yes. Some terrific managing. <laughs> I can't believe you put Big Ben in the game at Exhibition Stadium. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, he was he was right 57 of the times next year. You know, that was 90. He still holds the Major League record with 57 saves. And while we were talking here, Diaz came up with another unbelievable play. If he doesn't block that ball, there's a runner in scoring position. He has just been sensational behind the plate. Full count on Castillo, two away. Pitch is low and inside. Ball four. Fourth walk. Issued by Philly. He walked seven two slots ago. And after Philly retired the first two Blue Jays here in the fourth. There are now two base runners after the infield hit by Gonzalez. And the base on balls. Well, you're looking at Grady Little, who is the acting manager. And that is the most difficult decision for a manager is when to take your pitcher out. Now, there's nobody warming up in the Indian bullpen, but when your horse is on the mound, even when he's struggling a little bit, you got to stay with him. But I know as a manager, boy, your stomach gets rolling. When do I make the move? When do I pull the guy out? The 81st pitch by Finley is ball one to Jose Cruz, Jr. Over on with a walk. Now, we talked about Jose Cruz getting off to a terrific start his first year at the Major League level with Seattle and then the Blue Jays, but then he was sent down. He had to be sent down a couple years. Remember, he comes from great bloodline. His father, Jose Sr., was a tremendous hitter, had a great career, mostly with the Houston Astros, came up with the Cardinals and finished his career, I believe, with the Yankees when I was there. But this kid was an All-American at Rice. He's a switch hitter. His dad was a left-handed hitter, but his uncle... Two of his uncles, Tommy and Hector, were right-handed hitters. Well, I, at least Hector was a right-handed hitter, so he decided he's going to hit both ways, like his dad and his uncle. And there's a base hit down the left field line. Coming at the score is Gonzalez. Castillo holds it third. Cruz has his second run batted in of the night. Well, I think this is called fan interference. When we saw the umpire grab his wrist, you'll you'll see as the pitch is delivered, the ball is up. But you see Cruz get the head of the bat out. See how he got the bat out front and he hit it down a left field line. And I believe a fan interfered down here because the umpire is calling the play. Yes. And the fan reached out for the ball. And the umpire then gave the sign fan interference and then the home plate umpire then places the runners where he thinks they would have been. So Cruz who came into the game only two for 19 from the right side doubles in a run. His 14th extra base hit 14 of his 27 hits this year have gone for extra bases. The 0-1 to Homer Bush. Now 0-2. You know, we were talking before, when I'm thinking about Cruz, we were talking before about catalysts on a ball club making things happen. Well, Shannon Stewart, who's out of the lineup for the, the Blue Jays, is that catalyst for them because he can fly and make things happen. Homer Bush, having come over here from the Yankees last year, had an excellent year last year. He can run. And what that does, we were talking how it helps the Indian lineup. The same is true with the Blue Jays lineup. But... To see young Jose Cruz kind of getting his power numbers together, it might be coming out of that funk he's been in, where he just hasn't, really hasn't gotten his whole act together here. Well, the top of the order, Jeff, tonight, Cruz and Bush have driven in a combined four runs, two apiece. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you go into spring training with one game plan. Jim Fergosi knew he had Shannon Stewart at the front end. He knew he was going to get speed. They stole more bases this spring, I think, than they ever did before. Finley strikes out Bush. Fourth strikeout for Finley. 
but the Blue Jays add another run on two hits, and they leave two at the end of four. 6-1 Toronto. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Back in Toronto, we move to the fifth. David Wells and the Blue Jays leading Chuck Finley. And the Indians, six to one. Oh, what a contrast. We talked about David Wells having great command, and that's why the limited number of pitches. Finley got in so much trouble in the second inning because of the walks, three walks in that inning. Elevated number of pitches, boy, that can really put pressure on you. Finley, 85 pitches through four. Wells has thrown 59. Diaz, the catcher, leading off for the Indians here in the fifth. Diaz 0 for 1, fly to right in the second inning. Batting 327 on the season. Hard grounder. Batista could not come up with the throw. An infield hit for Diaz. Well, we showed you Len Barker's perfect game. How about Dave Steve nine years later against the Indians? saw Tony Fernandez, Pat Borders, who would go on to win a World Series MVP award with the Blue Jays, who also played, uh, later played for the Indians. Tony Fernandez playing in Japan now had two different stops here with the Blue Jays. And Fernandez also an ex-Indian. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tony Fernandez had a tremendous year here last year, at least the first half for the Blue Jays. ball down the left field line off the bat of Cabrera. So Diaz heads back to first. Tony Fernandez, who you mentioned now in Japan, has had three tours of duty with the Blue Jays, one of a handful of Major League players who had three different stints with one team. Of all active players currently in the Major Leagues, Ricky Henderson is the only player who had four stints, four separate stints with one club. Ricky, of course, with the Oakland A's. But it could happen again. The Indians have brought back Jeff Manto into their system mm -hmm. for the fourth time currently playing in AAA. So if they call up Manto, it would be his fourth separate tour of duty, having played for other teams in between. That's interesting. You know, when I was talking about Tony, thinking it was his second tour duty, I'd forgotten. I started to say that and thought maybe there were three. But what a tremendous career he had. Here was a gold glove shortstop the first time around. Last year, he played third. He was on the World Championship ball clubs. He played great second base for the Indians in 97. Got that big home run off of Benitez and the Orioles to send the Indians to the World Series. Cabrera heads down to first. Second walk issued by Wells, who came into the game leading the American League, walking only one batter per nine innings. You know, this was interesting that this part right here, released by the Blue Jays. How many times are players released in the prime of their career? And now he comes back, and he comes back a star. The first time he was here, he was only a part-time starter. He was mostly a relief pitcher. So when he left here, he went to Detroit, from Detroit to Cincinnati, Cincinnati to Baltimore, Baltimore to the Yankees. Five teams the last seven years. But his highlight season, of course, 1998, on a World Series ring, pitched a perfect game, started the All-Star game, third in Cy Young balloting. Not bad. He was always a, a real tough competitor. 
the need at the time when he was here initially with the Blue Jays, they needed a left-handed reliever. Two on, nobody out. The 1-0 -oh to Vizquel. Wells missing high and away. Two balls, no strikes. Omar 0 for 2, reached on an error. And fly to left. He is now 2 for his last 25. Foul ball down the left field line. 2 and 1. You know, you were talking about Charlie Manuel before. Charlie, of course, going back in the hospital. He'll be away from this club for two weeks. Long-time hitting coach, and hitting coaches really become father confessors very close to their hitters. Now Charlie is named the manager. He can't put as much time in with his hitters as he did as a hitting coach. You wonder if it has some sort of effect with this offense. Strike call, two and two. On the scale. Now that's not to take anything away from Clarence Jones, who was a hitting coach, who very successfully was a hitting coach. There he is, former teammate of mine in the minor leagues, who was a hitting coach with the Braves. But you just wonder, you know, even though your hitting coach has not left the premises, kind of the, the change in the work ethic has. Wells strikes out the scale. Third strikeout for David Wells. One away in the Indians' fifth. That big breaking ball that he got no more on. You hear the crowd react as former Blue Jay Roberto Alomar steps up to the plate. Well, he was a great contributor here when he was here with the Blue Jays. They just weren't happy when he left. Ten time All Star over his first 12 Major League seasons. 0 for 2 tonight. We mentioned bothered by that sore left elbow. And you see the bandage, the wrapping around that elbow. Wells missing inside, 1 and 1. Now we'll take a look at the hot zone. The red areas are where he's red hot, where he can hit the ball well. You can see that he likes the ball down more right-handed. Normally, when you have a switch hitter, they normally right-handed like the ball up. But he forces his right shoulder up and his front shoulder down a little bit to make sure he goes down to get the ball down. And, Kenny, I'm going to tell you, Robbie Alomar and Sandy Alomar Jr. are two of the finest kids I have ever been around in my life. I watched them grow up. Their, their dad, Sandy Sr., was a teammate of mine for three years with the Angels. These kids, no matter what happened with Robbie in that, that incident with uh, John Hirschbeck, it, it's just a shame that it colored part of this kid's career because this guy is a great player. Here's the one-two. He got him. Well, the veteran has reached back to get a little more. He just flat-out challenged Robbie Alomar with this a high fastball. Remember, we just showed it a hot zone. And the hot zones were down. He liked the ball down more. This is up a little bit. See, that's David Wells. He knows how to pitch, and he knows how to... He wants to go after a particular hitter. Now, the two strikeouts were on different pitches. The, the strikeout to Vizquel was a curveball. Here's Manny Ramirez with two on, two out. Bounces it back to Wells off the mound. The throw. You know, I wonder what happened on this ball, whether the ball didn't bite and come up the way he thought it would, or he lost it up in the lights. You know, sometimes a bouncing ball, if it's bounced high enough, you look up for it, you lose it in the lights, which sounds ridiculous. Normally you'd think it'd be a fastball, I mean a uh, fly ball, but this is really hit high. Now look at David, it looks like he's got it easy. Oh, it takes a a bounce. Does that back spin like a uh, tennis ball or what? Here's the approach. It bounces up. David Wells goes for the ball. And look at it. Yeah. It hits the turf funny. Remember, this is carpet. You wonder if the fact that the ball looked like it hit off the front of the plate got that funky spin. It's the second infield hit of the inning. Ooh. 
So the Indians have not hit the ball out of the infield this inning, and they have the bases loaded. Two infield hits, a walk, and two strikeouts. Travis Fryman with the bases loaded. Falls behind, 0-2. You know, we've seen some crazy things happen. Watch this one. Here's Ramirez's approach. He fouls the ball right down off the front of the plate. You can see the dirt, dirt fly up. And because it hit off the front of the plate, it probably got this backspin. It hits meeting line of grass and bounces backwards. This stuff is like playing on a green freeway, you know, on this turf. You never know how the ball's going to spin or how hard it's going to and high it's going to bounce. Two on Fryman, bases loaded, two outs. He hit him. Or did he not? Did not hit Fryman. It's a strikeout. And he is thrown out by the catcher, Castillo, for the third out. So Wells strikes out three in the inning. And the Indians strand the bases loaded. As we move to the bottom of the fifth from Toronto on Fox Sportsnet Baseball Thursday, Earl Mondesi takes a strike. Mondesi, Delgado, and Batista for the Blue Jays here in the fifth. Raul 0 for 2, fly to left in the first, struck out in the third inning. And he falls behind 0-2. looking at Mondesi who's had a an outstanding career so far in some regards people think he should be a bigger producer I mean the years that he's had that he's had so far have been outstanding years but you just wonder he has not been a big RBI guy in a sense of 130 140 he tends at times with runners on base to chase bad break and stuff but this is one of those guys you talk about being a five tool player a guy who has power can hit for average can run can field and can throw. He can do all these things. He's a big, strong kid, about 5'11", but he weighs about 220. They list him at 215. I bet a couple years ago he weighed 230. He stole 36 bases last year to go along with his 33 homers. 99 runs batted in. Mondesi and Jeff Bagwell were the only 30-30 men in the majors last year. Seven years with the Dodgers. And he strikes out for the second time tonight. Fifth strikeout for Chuck Finley. Take a look at our Fram American League Central standings. And for the Cleveland Indians, it is the first time since 1995 that they have trailed in the standings after April. So from May 1st on, the last four years, no other club aside from the Indians had been in first place. Well, that's tough to stay up with something like that. You know, a lot of people said that the Central Division was weak, but uh, these guys have been an outstanding ball club. It's not been something that they haven't deserved. I mean, they played for it. They hammered the ball. They field the ball. The only weakness people have felt they had was not a a lot of starting pitching let's put it that way but most people in the game outside of Atlanta and New York the Yankees can have the same concern two and one on Carlos Delgado days out of first place mm, not many They're young. They have young pitching coming along. They look like they really enjoy playing for Jerry Manuel. Frank Thomas is getting it back together again. It could be some fun on the south side of Chicago. I've been there before. And they were, had a young team and it all came together. The 1990 team won 94 games when nobody expected it. But it's still very early. You just, uh, the so-called cliches, you know, the cream coming to the top, the by the end of the season, the best team in the division will be there. It will not be a fluke. And the man, Jerry Manuel, replaced 
as White Sox manager is in the third base coach box for the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. Delgado with a smash to right field, no doubt about it. Home run number nine of the season for Carlos Delgado. Eight of the nine here at Skydome. And the Blue Jays lead is now 7-1. Without a doubt, we know he has good power. 44 home runs last year. He crushes this ball. We were talking when, in the second inning, leading off the inning, he was walked, and we said, there are certain people you got to be careful of. Well, obviously, this is one of them. Here's the pitch. This looks like a breaking ball that hung right in the middle of the plate and didn't hang there long. Here's Tony Batista. He takes ball one. One more look at Delgado's ninth. We mentioned eight of the nine have come here at home. Eight of the nine have been solo shots. Mm. As we were talking about before the home run, the former White Sox manager, Terry Bevington, now the Blue Jays' third base coach. He was replaced in Chicago last year by Jerry Manuel. Enrique Wilson with the throw. And Batista is now one for three. Two away in the Blue Jays' fifth. Coming up next week on Fox Sports Net Baseball Thursday, some of you will see the Mets and the Pirates, others the Rangers, and Chuck Finley's former team, the Anaheim Angels. Check local listings. Mets Pirates, Rangers Angels, one week from tonight on Baseball Thursday. With two away, here's Marty Cordova. 0 for 1, walked and scored back in the second inning. Finley is now over the 100 pitch mark. There is Terry Bevington. <laughs> second White Sox manager after Jeff Torbo. You know who I replaced? Jim Fregosi, who, of course, now managing the Blue Jays. And it's strange how this game goes. Sitting alongside of Fregosi or in that dugout with Jim Fregosi is Cito Gaston, the most successful manager ever in franchise history. And you used to manage the Indians. Mm -hmm. Pascal throws out Sexton. So that will do it for the Blue Jays in the fifth, but they add another run. On uh, Delgado's homer, it is now 7-1, James. About Charlie Manuel, as promised, here it is. He's meant a lot to me in the last five years. He's pretty much showed me everything as far as hitting goes. and um, it, it got almost a little choked up when you hear because that's all he's ever wanted to do, is be a manager for this team and, and to, to take charge and to, you know, and to be a leader and to, do everything that he wanted to do, and that was managing the big leagues. And the Indians off to a 13 and 11 start under Manuel, but they have lost four in a row. Swept by the Yankees. They led last night's game 5 2. Yankees scored four late runs to win the game 6 5. The 0 1 to section, fouled back to the screen 0 and 2. Well, having been in Cleveland, of course, we were there before. The teams were very good, but the games against the Yankees are so important. It's kind of an establishing your turf type of thing, and, and that game last night really had to hurt the Indians. And, of course, we mentioned it earlier about Charlie Manuel having to go in for surgery and being away from this club for two more weeks. That's got to really be a difficult time for him with his team. You know, they're concerned about him. They're worrying about him. This is a good team of veterans with good coaching staff, but they're still human beings, and there's always a concern. Manuel had hoped the surgery could wait until the All-Star break, but the doctors felt he should uh, have it done tomorrow, so he will miss the next 10 days to two weeks. Wells does not have trouble with this one. Bit of a low throw, but it beats Section for the first out in the Indian sixth. Well, Jeff, you and I move on to Cincinnati, Ohio for FX Baseball Saturday as Ken Griffey Jr. and Mark McGuire get together the Cardinals and the Reds Saturday at 1 Eastern. 
10 a.m. Pacific. FX Baseball Saturday. Boy, I'm looking forward to that. I all spring long had seen the Cardinals, and the Cardinals were really a good-looking team in the spring. Cincinnati trained on the other side of the state in Sarasota, and of course all the clamoring with Griffey Jr. being there, and of course he's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start, but I, I'd like to be around when all of a sudden he gets it all together because he is so special. How about Junior being in that division? And then Bagwell's not even on there. Cardinals and Reds, top two teams in the NL Central. Tatis is out. They're outstanding young third baseman. Enrique Wilson heads down to first. Third walk issued by Wells tonight. Jeff, we are told both McGuire and Edmonds hit their 10th home runs of the season earlier today as the Cardinals shut out the Pirates 5-0. Now that's an interesting looking team. If that uh, veteran pitching staff with Daryl Kyle and Pat Henkin, Andy Bennis get back kind of where they had been a couple years ago and that Rick and Keel, boy, what a show he has become. A terrific pitcher on top of that, a good hitter. Has a couple home runs. I think he had two home runs, a double and a triple in his first five at-bats. Took me a, my first couple of years to do that. <laughs> Strike one to Alex Ramirez. How about Kerry Wood homering in his return? Yeah. The major leagues on Tuesday. I guess you can say he could do it all, but he's a big guy, and he got all of that one. It's contagious. We saw Chris Brock of the Phillies homer two mm -hmm. Thursdays ago on Baseball Thursday. Todd Stottlemyer homered in Philadelphia with his father Mel in the stands watching him pitch from the stands for the first time. They have faced each other on the field. Mel, Yankee pitching coach. Todd, the former Blue Jay and Texas Ranger. One and one on Alex Ramirez. One out. Man on first. Now two balls, one strike. How about that when you think about it? A father watching their son play, and there's so many father and son combinations now, but here we're talking about the Griffies. Kenny Sr. is a coach on the same team with his son now, and Kenny Jr. has always shown such respect for his dad, and now he's wearing his father's former number 30 instead of the 24. And it just is it's neat. You know, I remember watching all three of my boys play, and it's kind of an overwhelming feeling watching them succeed. You want them to do so well for their own for their own sake, you know? And I can rem imagine what my dad must have felt like when I was playing. Not to put too many great days, but at least he saw me play. But how about when you're right there watching your son play at the major league level? That's something. How about watching your son wrestle? Yeah, well, that worries me. You know, you, he's big and he's strong, but that's a tough business, boy. And they whack each other around and fire people around. You know, it, I think he's close to 280 pounds now. That's a lot of beef flying around that ring. And we're talking about Dale Torborg, a.k.a. the Demon yep. in the WCW. That's him. <laughs> Who had played three years in the minor leagues. Was a good athlete. You know, you've got to be in that business. I was never sure about that business, Kenny, but up close, those guys are outstanding athletes. The 2-2 from Wells. Base hit, right field. Wilson holds it second. And the Indians have first and second with only one out. Are the Torborgs the first baseball wrestling father-son combination? I don't know. That's a good question. I know Chris Jericho's dad, Ted Urban, was a player with the Rangers. The New York Rangers. New York Rangers hockey. I, you know, I know. It might be. Didn't realize we were first. That's good. Maybe a question for Regis. <laughs> Here's Einar Diaz. Infield hit his last time up. Diaz one for two as he takes ball one. 
One out. Wilson, the runner on second. Alex Ramirez on at first. Indians trailing the Blue Jays 7-1 in the top of the sixth inning from Sky Dome in Toronto. Ball two, 2-0 two oh on Diaz. Yeah, I was a little surprised as we talked earlier about the, the ratio of walks the nine innings pitch for David Wells. He's always so outstanding, leading the league. Then with a six-run lead to walk a guy, it's not like him. Now two and one. Wells has walked three tonight. He had walked only four batters all season in his previous six starts. Remember our concern had been because on our expect FX broadcast last Saturday, we saw him leave the game at Yankee Stadium with a tight back. And we just wondered whether, you know, it becomes cumulative, the number of pitches as the game goes along sitting in the dugout. And he's had some long innings sitting in the dugout tonight to cool off. Strike call, two and two. Had an MRI on his back nine days ago out of Los Angeles. And then pitched in the game Saturday. Left after five innings, but did pick up the victory. His fourth of the year and has not missed a turn. Well, he's a tough guy. He comes to pitch. Give me the ball. I'll go as long as I can and go as hard as I can. Off-speed pitch. Misses outside. And the count is full on the number nine hitter, the catcher, Einar Diaz. Well, just as we're talking, you're seeing a left-hander and a right-hander. Left-hander Eric Gunderson, Paul Quantrill, a right-hander. So Jim Fregosi and... Rick Lankford, his pitching coach, see the same thing because when you get a little stiff, it's not your stuff that you lose, it's your command. The payoff pitch to Diaz, and he lifts this one in the air. Right center, catch is made by Vodacy for the second out. So with two away, the center fielder, Holbert Cabrera, steps in. Cabrera tripled, stole home in the first, rounded to second in the third, walked in the fifth, one for two. We mentioned earlier, Kenny Lofton and Jacob Cruz, two center fielders, both on the disabled list. Lofton on the 15-day DL, Cruz on the 60-day disabled list. Mark Witten had his problems in center field last night. In the 6-5 loss to the Yankees. Yeah, I don't think you can really prepare with so many injuries. Fast to third. Batista steps on the bag to retire the side in the sixth. The Indians strand two base runners and foul the Blue Jays 7-1. Welcome back, Fox Sportsnet Baseball Thursday from downtown Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Blue Jays beginning a seven-game homestand. They lead the Indians by the score of 7-1. Chuck Finley, the Indian starter, lasted only five innings through 103 pitches, 43 of those in the five-run second. The line of Finley, five innings, six hits, seven earned runs. He walked four, struck out five. Allowed the one home run. And in nine starts now here at Sky Dome, has won only once. 26-year-old right-hander Sean DePaula will make his fourth appearance of the season for the Indians. Kenny, Sean DePaula really made a flying trip through the minor leagues last year. He's out of Wake Forest University where he was an outstanding pitcher. He's only 26 years old, as you mentioned, but he went all the way from the Carolina League to the big leagues. He appeared in 11 games last year for Mike Hargrove and the Indians. Big right-hander, 6'4", 215. So the ball into pitch for the Indians here in the bottom of the sixth. And a strike called Andy Thompson, the left fielder, who saved the baseball after his first major league hit and RBI in the second inning. He then grounded out to third base in the fourth. Thompson falls behind 0-2. Bottom of the order for the Blue Jays. Thompson, Gonzalez, and Castillo here in the sixth. We talked about how big the ball is. Now we, he replaces a six-foot-six pitcher, but this one being right-handed comes like almost a slinging motion. 
So I can see where he'd be real tough on right-handers if he puts the pitches where he wants them. One ball, two strike count on Thompson. Blue Jays scored five in the second on only three hits. Finley walked three. Another run scored on a wild pitch. And DePaula comes in and strikes out the first batter. He faces Andy Thompson. Kenny, when I was looking at this guy, I, you know, I've seen him throw before, but not so much from this perspective. He comes around from this area here with his arm delivery. It's kind of a slinging type delivery. Watch how he gets on his back leg the way you want it. He's balanced well, and this leg action is perfect balance. But then his arm comes slinging around here. See how it comes kind of late? Gonzalez, ground ball to the third baseman, Enrique Wilson. He throws him out quickly two away. So he's got to be very difficult for right-handers to see. He's kind of got a long arm action, and he almost catapults toward the plate a little bit. So, you know, it's like if you got a guy throwing sidearm or submarine from the right-handed side, and you're right-handed hitter, you might not see the ball. The next minute, you know, coming from a funny angle. Paula had allowed five runs in four to third innings in his first three appearances for the Indians this year. Pitched in 11 games last season for Cleveland as Alberto Castillo falls behind 0-1. Castillo struck out with the bases loaded in the second, walked in the fourth inning. Base hit right field. So after DePaula retired the first two Blue Jays here in the sixth, Castillo, the number nine hitter, singles to right. talking about Castillo what a nice job he's done behind the plate as well we watched Einar Diaz have an unbelievable game back there but Castillo really came of age last year spent a lot of years in the the Mets organization but he last year just kind of came of age with the Cardinals and having a chance to to catch oh we've been a good catcher his offense start coming around Jose Cruz Jr. Jeff will now bat from the left side against the right-hander to Paula Cruz 261 as a left-handed hitter this year. Double dinner run his last time up. He's driven in two runs tonight, as has Homer Bush. You know, it's interesting to watch hitters when they switch around. You know, it's not, it's first of all, it's very difficult to keep your mechanics together hitting from one side of the plate. Think what it is to play at the major league level and try to have to hit from both sides of the plate and stay together. Now, as you take a look at Cruz, he's got a flat bat. It means he like he's a more of a line drive hitter and likes the ball up in the strike zone a little bit more. When you see a guy flat the bat out like that, normally left-handers who want the ball down will hold the bat vertically. So they just then take their hands and take the head of the bat and swing through almost like a golfer would. If you want to protect up in the zone a little, you flatten the bat out, and that's exactly what what Cruz does. The 2-1 from DePaula, strike called on the inside corner, 2-2. Two and two. They're also watching some defense at first base where you have a catcher running, so you see Richie Sexton is playing behind the runner, but he can't get too far back because the runner will take off. But see how he comes in, taps the glove, and then backs up. Slow roller down the first base line. Nice play by DePaula. He tags out Cruz to retire the side. Six of the books from Skydome. Blue Jays seven. Indians one. Wells working into the seventh. What does his manager, Jim Fergosi, have to say about him? David's David. David's a guy who knows how to pitch. He uh, knows what it takes to win. Uh, he, he's, he's, if you look at what he did last year, it's amazing. He won more games than any left-hander in the American League. He led the league in complete games. 
He led the league in innings pitch. What more can you ask out of a guy? This guy does a great job. I think his manager likes him. What do you think? I would say so. How would you handle David Wells if you were his manager? Same way for Gosi is, and, and Joe Torre did. Whatever he does, it's been working. You know, you handle him that way. You let him, you give him the ball, let him pitch. Here's Homer Bush at second. Remember, he got into it a couple of times with, with Torre. We mentioned earlier the, uh, the flap over the Babe Ruth camp. A couple of other instances early in the season a couple of years back, but I think they finally came to an understanding and David Wells had his career year in 1998. Mm -hmm. Well, David is a free spirit. There is a reason why he got released from this club, the, <laughs> the Blue Jays organization, when he was in his prime and his, when he was young and in the middle of his pitching career. He, he had a tendency at that time to antagonize some people, but he's a spirited guy, you know, and, and, and we talk terms before like a gamer, a warrior. That's what he is. Give him the ball, leave him alone. How about the ovation? We heard David Wells receive from the fans in New York as he headed out to the bullpen to warm up prior to the game on Saturday. Now Roberto Alomar can't believe it. He thinks it was a foul ball. But Ian Lamplo says that is not the case. Well, Grady Little has asked him to confer with the first base umpire and that's the thing to do here because the home plate umpire can't see where the ball's hit in front of him. Wally Bell is at first base and he is going to confer and now though they called him out they said it did not hit him. Well, here's the pitch let's see if we can see it from this angle. Ball was inside, and it, it from that shot, it looked like it did hit his knee. Take a shot from the side, but this angle, you can see that ball definitely hit him. Yeah, Robbie Alomar is, even though that one circumstance, and strangely enough, Mark Hirschbeck, John's brother, is umpiring at third base. Robbie Alomar is not your typical complaining, natural complainer. Ian Lamplew, the home plate umpire. Interesting in that all four umpires for this series are out of the National League this year, the consolidation of umpires. And in many other circumstances, we've seen two and two, three and one, but unusual to see four National League umpires work an American League game. I think the more the season goes on, the more you'll see that. It doesn't matter where they have worked before. How about the job Frank Robinson has done, making sure that this brawling is going to end? I've been very impressed. You remember, Frank was one of the toughest guys that ever played this game, and he didn't mind duking it out himself. But he also knows it doesn't belong in this game. And speaking of the brawling, coming up tonight on The Last Word, Jim Rome and his guests discuss the beanballs and their place in Major League Baseball. And Jim will be joined by our Kevin Kennedy as well as Tigers manager Phil Garner. Check local listings. The last word tonight on Fox Sports Net. Pedro Martinez yesterday suspended five games for the incident against the Indians on Sunday when he threw it on our Diaz and then Roberto Alomar. Charles Nagy was fined for hitting Jose Offerman. Martinez has appealed the suspension. Well, you know, when you think about the overall picture, the battle was one thing. This other thing about pitching inside, it, it's where the players get upset is when they're thrown at around their head or behind their head. If it's behind their head, they're falling out of the way, they fall right into it. But over the years, the, the for a while, the way this inside part of the plate was taken away because the umpires could throw you out without a warning, pitchers were afraid to go inside or if they went inside one time the hitters got all upset now sure there were times in the past when the the great hitters got knocked down and went to the mound but most of the time it was taken care of by the players themselves they evened the thing up and that was it 
the important thing is not to throw around the head. And even the ball that Pedro Martinez hit, Robbie Alomar with it, hit him in the back of his thigh. Bounce to third, backhanded by Batista. A 1 2 3 7 for David Wells. Three ground ball outs. As we head to the bottom of the seventh, let's take a look at what's coming your way tonight on the National Sports Report following the game. For that, we take you to the Fox Network Center. 7 1, seventh inning stretch here at Sky Dome, our McDonald's. Game summary, Andy Thompson, first career hit and RBI. David Wells, another strong start. Let's take a look. First inning, Colbert Cabrera triples to right field off Wells. Leading off the game, and he would steal home in a double steal for the game's first run. Then second inning, here he is, Andy Thompson. Faces loaded, his first major league hit and RBI in the five-run Blue Jay second. Then in the fifth, Toronto already ahead, 6-1. to one. Carlos Delgado, deep to right field, his ninth of the year. And the Blue Jays out on top by the score of 7-1. As Homer Bush steps to the plate, leading off for Toronto here in the bottom of the seventh against Sean DePaula, who came on last inning in relief of Chuck Finley, who allowed seven runs, all earned, six hits in five innings. Well, that was not what the Indians were hoping for from their ace, who had been red hot. We talked about how hot he had been the last three starts, especially. That will happen, and it, as you mentioned, Kenny, that second inning just was a killer. The three walks are tough enough, and it could have been much worse if Einar Diaz had not done such a fine job behind the plate blocking so many pitches in the dirt with runners at third base. Here's the third baseman, Wilson. Just beats Homer Bush with the throw. Well, Jeff, a look at our Toyota League leaders, the first place teams in both the American League and the National League. White Sox with a three game advantage over these Indians in the Central. Well, some clubs have been red hot, obviously. The Braves just coming off that 15-game winning streak. The Cardinals got off to such a great start. The White Sox, the surprise team. A lot of people felt that they were young, but little did they think they could score so many runs. Of course, the Diamondbacks won 100 games last year, and they're back at it again. Randy Johnson making sure of that. One and one on Raul Mondesi. On to see 0 for 3 tonight. He is the only Blue Jays starter who has not reached base. On to see was struck out twice by Finley. Also fly to left in the first inning. over the last five years have won their division by a wide margin advancing to the postseason five consecutive years you know you would think that'd make it a little easier remember we talked about after the Yankees had that season two years ago they won 125 games total People say, well, there's no way you could do that again. But the minute they started to struggle, they said, what's wrong with the Yankees? The same could be said of the Indians. All of a sudden, the other clubs in the division are getting better. Yeah, the Indians have been scuffling, but they haven't had any no cushion with them. Everybody expects them to go undefeated. Honestly, called out on strikes. Second strikeout for Sean DePaula. As we head to another Fox Sportsnet game break. Well, you talked about the first place Diamondbacks. They are in Milwaukee. Arizona leading 1-0 in the top of the first. And Rubio Durazo goes deep. A three-run homer is fifth of the year. Arizona leads the game 6-0. And Armando Reynoso has not allowed a hit through four innings. Carlos Delgado takes ball one. 
Should the Indians lose tonight, Jeff, barring a huge comeback, this would be their fifth consecutive loss, matching their longest streak of last season. Last July, they lost five in a row, ironically, two to the Blue Jays, and then three to the Yankees. They were just swept by the Yankees after losing the last game of the series against the Red Sox, and now beginning a four-game set here in Toronto. Oh, it hurts them where they are struggling right now. Obviously, they need somebody to shut the opposition down completely. And Bartolo Colon, one of their aces, is down. He's on the disabled list. Tonight, Chuck Finley, you're, you're hoping that this, another one of your aces, can stop the losing streak. Dave Berba pitched very well last night. It was the bullpen that could not hold the Yankees. Jared Wright has pitched very, very well this year. But Ber still, when your aces don't do it, that, that worries you. Berba left with a 5-2 lead in last night's game. There's Charles Nagy. He will pitch tomorrow night. Nagy only 1-4. And, and he will take on... Roy Halladay also struggling with an earned run average of 10.57 for the Blue Jays. Well, that's another story. When you think about Halladay and you're talking about Nagy, of course, Nagy has been just outstanding during the regular season. He won 17 a game, the game last year again. And the Indians have struggled in playoff series openers. That's one of the reasons that it said all along they were looking for an ace, you know, to win that first game. Who knows if the ace will do that? I mean, sometimes we play with these numbers an awful lot and harp on them, and maybe somebody else might not made any difference. But how about the Blue Jays as a whole, their pitching staff? They're last in the American League. Last year, they were being raved about so many young arms. Halliday and Carpenter and Escobar. Now they're sitting last. Not only did the Blue Jays set a team record for home runs in April, they also set a team record for highest earned run average in the month of April. Oh, we didn't want to harp on that part, but you're right. And that's got you, if you're the Blue Jay fan or Jim Fregosi, scratching your head because Carpenter and Halliday are those two big six-foot-six, young, hard-throwing kids that you were really counting on to anchor your staff. Well, Carpenter's won three in a row after an 0-3 start. And he will pitch on Saturday afternoon against Jarrett Wright. A two-out walk to Delgado. Here's Tony Batista. One for three doubled and scored back in the second inning. You know, we were talking about Batista and this stance he has. It's such a unique stance. We're talking about Freiman being closed. The new stance of this, this age is the wide-open stance. No stance could be wider than this one. And look where the hands start up here, and then they get all the way back down low. 0-2 on Batista. Very unique-looking stance, but it's what he uses to get himself in a position to hit. The idea of this wide-open stance that people didn't used to use a whole lot in the past was that you could see the pitcher with two eyes instead of looking around the corner, and then you just kind of close up and get ready and get something moving. First, Batista came over from Arizona midway through the year last year and just continued to rake for home runs when he got here. But, you know, if a scout looked at a guy with that kind of stance at the beginning and said, what is this guy doing? And yet it works for him. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the seventh inning. 7-1 Seven Blue Jays. Delgado, the runner on first. remains two and two. Anyway, we were talking about a unique looking stance. Of course, the stance that really maybe was the first one I saw that was so as exaggerated as this was Andres Galarraga. What a story he's become this year. Coming back from cancer and off to a red hot start. Well, he started under Don Baylor starting using this stance where he could see the pitcher better, where he was open like this and then closed up. when you had 
uh, hitting coaches talking about stances. They talk about three types of stances. A closed stance where the front foot is close to, closer to the plate than the back foot. A parallel stance where the feet were even alongside the plate. And then the open stance. And the open stance was not one that you used to see much of. And guys didn't used to wrap the bat around their head, but it works. The 2-2 from DePaula. Grounded foul. Back behind third base. Carlos Delgado heading back to first. Missing outside, and the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. Uh, Tony Batista, two away, bottom of the seventh inning. Blue Jays, five runs in the second. One in the fourth, one in the fifth. The Indians scored their run in the first inning. Second consecutive walk issued by DePaula. told you moments ago about the Diamondbacks and the Brewers. Now you can see it for yourself. Top of the first inning, one nothing Diamondbacks. Rubio Durazo, a three-run shot, his fifth of the year to left center. And the Diamondbacks take a 6 nothing lead now into the sixth as Armando Reynoso has not allowed a hit over the first five innings. Are we allowed to talk about it since we're not there? <laughs> I guess you can. You look at that ball club and what a job Buck Showalter and that whole organization did last year. 100 wins, second time, second season only in existence. I mean, that's unheard of. I know that it's, this is a different free agency market now in the sense that you can sign free agents, uh, you can, and you're drafting from both leagues. But when you become an expansion team and in two years you win 100 games, that's uh, almost incredible. I mean, I thought it was incredible the National Football League a couple of years ago. But even more so in baseball. And Jacksonville and Carolina in their second seasons both made it to the championship games. Arizona in first place again this year, 17 and 10. And they lead Milwaukee 6 0 in the sixth. The 1 1 to Cordova in the air to right. Manny Ramirez, and that will do it for the Blue Jays. They strand two. Seven innings complete from Sky Dome. Seven one, Jays. Welcome back to Fox Sportsnet Baseball Thursday from Toronto, where the Blue Jays lead the Indians seven one. Travis Fryman, Richie Sexton, Enrique Wilson for the Indians here in the eighth. How would you like to sit up there? Way up there? Way up there. Well, you got a different perspective. I mean, watching a football game, I don't know about a baseball game. Remember Lindsey Nelson, the old Mets yeah, broadcaster? Yeah, remember once, that. Once did a game from the Houston Astrodome, from, from the roof. Yeah. All the way up top. And then not long after that, a workman fell out of that. I mean, that had to, Lindsey had some different thoughts. Look at the height of this. This is a beautiful park. The first of the retractable roofs. Wells pitching to Fryman, leading off the eighth. And Travis takes strike two. You know, I thought I saw Steve Lyons in the stands before. The guy with the Blue Jay hat on? Was yeah. that Steve? In the stands or on the roof? I wouldn't be surprised if we looked up, <laughs> looked up in the rafters and saw Steve waving down. Only when I was managing him. In fact, he played for you for the White Sox in the last game at Exhibition Stadium. Yes, he did. He played in the last game at Old Comiskey, too. He was the defensive replacement at first base. He played all nine positions for me at Wrigley Field in an exhibition game one time. And he drove me nuts sitting in the dugout with him. <laughs> it, it worked for Ozzie again. It made him, kept him in the lineup. Didn't work for Steve. I guess Steve was in the dugout more than he was out on the field with you. <laughs> well, he was a good player. 
You know, he was the type of player who could play anywhere, and that was the value that I needed in that ball club was being able to play him at first, all through, all around the infield, the outfield. He was our third catcher, but he wanted to play every day. Obviously, you don't want a player that doesn't want him. The one-two to Fryman. Wells just missing on the inside corner. Two and two. Fryman 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out with the bases loaded to end the fifth inning. Strike three call. Sixth strikeout for David Wells. One away in the Indians' eighth. High stakes, high rollers, but are the thoroughbred horses paying the ultimate price? The dark side of horse racing, Sunday, 7 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Chris Myers going deep with the Kentucky Derby coming up, of course, this Saturday. Here's Richie Section. Wells misses for ball one. Section 0 for 3 tonight. Bounce back to Wells his last time up. The average now under 200. Strike called, one and one. Kenny, we were talking earlier. When you think about the Indians, you think about a big, powerful club that really tears the cover off the ball, and obviously they haven't been. Their pitching's been good. It's ranked third in, in the league. Their fielding has been number one. They just have struggled. But, you know, maybe we're making a whole lot more of it. Okay, they're in the process of possibly losing their fifth in a row. By the same token, they're so close in, in range that when they put it together, when they get the hurt guys back, and Robbie Alomar's brother, as Sexton hits that base hit to left field, but Robbie Alomar's brother, Sandy, is such a key to this ball club. Not taking a thing away from Einar Diaz is sitting next to Robbie, but the leadership ability and the offensive punch that Sandy brings to this club, they miss him. They really miss him. He is really one of the key building blocks. He was here when they were losing, and he is uh, really special. Now, this kid, Diaz, has done a great job filling in for him. Diaz takes off the chest protector as he may bat this inning. One out, section the runner on first. Enrique Wilson at the plate. Wilson, one for two with a walk. 7-1 Blue Jays. A five-run second broke things open against Chuck Finley. Line drive caught by the second baseman, Bush. And a double up section. With the snap of a finger, the top of the eighth comes to an end. The Blue Jays lead the American League in double plays. Things off for Toronto. Earlier in the second inning, with the bases loaded, Chuck Finley on the mound, tops it, singles to right field. His first Major League hit, his first Major League RBI, our Nissan play of the game. Well, that's great to see the fans cheering for him. Bobby Knopp, veteran, outstanding second baseman, in fact, part of the double play combination for Jim Fergosi with the Angels. Now the first base coach congratulating him. It's a big time in a young man's life. How about if he calls home and his baby was delivered tonight? That's a real big night. Baby is due on Saturday, so you never know. <laughs> Wife Christina back in Madison, Wisconsin. Big week for the Thompson family. Thompson was the first Blue Jay to face DePaula back in the sixth. He will now be the first Blue Jay to face 34-year-old right-hander Steve Reed here in the eighth. Well, he's going to face a side wheeler who's been struggling. His numbers aren't very good the start of this season. The league's hitting 419 against him, but he appeared in 80, 63 games last year for... The Indians did a real nice job, three and two. He originally came up the giant organization you'll see as a submarine type pitcher down underneath. Strike called 0 and 1. Bottom of the order for the Blue Jays here in the eighth. They lead 7 1. They loaded the bases in the second. They had only three base hits in the second inning. But Finley walked three, also threw a wild pitch. Five runs scored in the second. Oh, and two on Thompson. 
Alex Gonzalez on deck. Kenny, you can imagine how tough it is. You've been watching pitchers come over the top with their pitches. And you look for a release point as a hitter, some up over the shoulder, alongside the shoulder, and all of a sudden the guy comes in. Now you're looking for the ball down alongside his right knee. Now two and two on Thompson. Well, you'll just take a look at this now. Instead of the ball coming from out of this area, it's going to come out of here. Boy, does that foul you up as a hitter. Look how low he comes with that ball. Bounce foul back behind third base. And a nice catch by one of the fans in the first row. 16,637 here at Sky Dome tonight as the Blue Jays look to send the Indians to their fifth consecutive loss. Reed just misses, and the count is full. You know, the first time I ever faced a guy thrown from the underneath like that, he threw a breaking ball and it broke up because he threw from down under there. Ted Abernathy, his name was, pitched with Cincinnati. Threw from like that, and I'm looking for the ball, and it goes right up through the strike zone. I couldn't believe it. Never saw anything like that before. You still haven't seen the ball. Not, not really. Thompson heads down to first. Time now for another Fox Sports Net game break. Bottom of the sixth inning, nobody out. Armando Reynoso up until this point is not allowed a hit. But Luis Lopez breaks up the no-hitter with a bloop single to left. Diamondbacks still lead the Brewers by the score of 6 nothing. How about that? Former teammates with the Mets. Yes. Alex Gonzalez takes ball one. Well, we showed you the final out in the Len Barker. Perfect game against Toronto. The final out in the Dave Steve no-hitter against Cleveland. We mentioned David Wells' perfect game against Minnesota with the Yankees. And Armando Reynoso tonight brought a no-hitter into the sixth inning for the Diamondbacks. You know, speaking of no-hitters, how about a little trivia quiz? You heard who the catcher was. They caught Barker's perfect game. He is the answer to a trivia question. He is one of three catchers to have caught a no-hitter in each league. But he's the only catcher to do something in ever done. What do you think? You got the answer to this? I think I figured it out from the first part of the question. <laughs> he is the only catcher to catch a perfect game in both leagues? Exactly. And there were two other catchers who have caught no hitters in each league. Ironically, each one of them caught a perfect game as well, but not two of them. I get the feeling one of them is sitting to my right. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> Gus Triandos was the other one. Gus Triandos caught a perfect game of Jim Bunning at Shea Stadium on Father's Day 1964 and caught Hoyt Wilhelm's no hitter. Now that's, how about that trivia, Hoyt Wilhelm had the most appearances ever at one point. It was in the Hall of Fame, but mostly as a relief pitcher. So Jeff Torborg, Ron Hassey, and Gus Triandos, the only three catchers who caught a no-hitter in both leagues. <laughs> Never thought I'd get that in. Foul ball down the left field line. Okay, the rest of that question. What was the other perfect game that Ron Hassey caught? I'll give you a hint. It was with another Canadian team. Was it Dennis Martinez? That's who it was against the Dodgers. The 2-2 two -two and Reed strikes out Gonzalez for the first out of the Blue Jays' eighth. Time now for a Fox Sports Net game break. We take you to Bush Stadium in St. Louis this afternoon. Bottom of the sixth inning with the Cardinals leading 3 0. Jim Edmonds goes deep off Francisco Cordova, his 10th of the year to right center. On the next pitch, Mark McGuire hits his 10th of the season to the upper deck in left field. Cardinals win it 5 0 over the Pirates. For McGuire, his 532nd career home run. He is two in back of Jimmy Fox for ninth on the all-time list. And McGuire and the Cardinals will 
Coming to your living room on FX Saturday afternoon. Jeff, you and I travel to Cincinnati tomorrow for Saturday afternoon's game on FX, the Cardinals and the Reds. Yeah, I just root so hard for Mark McGuire. He has meant so much to this game, and he's a special human being. He really cares. He cares about his team, which is great to see. Not a guy trying to get out the most money that he can. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you try to get your market value, but he found a place that he liked, that he wanted to stay there. Really a special guy. Two and one on Alberto Castillo. One for two with a walk. One out, bottom of the eighth inning. Thompson, the runner on first. Blue Jays leading 7-1. Over an Indians club without Kenny Lofton, without Sandy Alomar Jr. And tonight, at least, without Jim Tomey and David Justice, who were a combined 3-for-27 lifetime against David Wells, so they did not start tonight's game. And without their manager, Charlie Manuel, and we wish Charlie the best of luck. He will undergo another colon operation tomorrow in Cleveland. And will miss the next two weeks or so. So Grady Little managing the ball club tonight. David Wells looking to even the score with Grady Little. The only full game Grady Little managed in the major leagues. He was a minor league manager for 16 years. And, of course, he's filled in at times after ejections. But the only full game Brady Little managed with the Red Sox. Jimmy Williams was away attending his son's graduation. And Boston beat the Yankees and David Wells 10-6. to So in the only full game Brady Little has managed in the majors, he beat David Wells. Wells is beating him tonight. Castillo goes down on strikes for the second time. Yeah, you look at Grady, he was just smiling before. That's what interim managers can do. They can smile when their club loses seven to one. It's the, the regular manager that's eating his stomach up. Grady's brother, Brian Little, is the first base coach for the White Sox. Sure, Grady expecting that post-game phone call from Charlie Manuel, who has television, radio, his computer with him in the hospital, tracking every pitch. Charlie has had a rough time. Two years ago, he had open-heart surgery. He really is a special guy. That's why John Hart picked him to succeed Mike Hargrove. What a tough job. Base hit into right field. Thompson holds it second. Second hit of the night for Cruz. Here's Homer Bush, who, like Jose Cruz Jr., has driven in two runs tonight. Bush one for four. Steps in with two outs in the Blue Jays' eighth. Against Steve Reed, the third inning, it's pitcher Chuck Finley, the starter, lasted only five innings. Allowed seven runs on six hits. He also walked four Blue Jays. Reed missing inside for ball one. We were talking earlier about what a big hole Homer's trying to get out of. You know, he had a slightly pulled hamstring earlier in the year was out for a little while but boy he had a great year last year chance to play every day he hit 320 played in 128 games but he had five home runs for a little guy 55 rbis 32 stolen bases and he has been struggling and then you know when you're in a slump like that the difficult thing is how to get out of it you can't sit and get out of it but yet you can't keep batting your head against the wall so jim fergosi rested him a couple games played craig Graybeck, and then homer's back in the lineup and it looks like he's swinging a bat a little bit better Homer Bush came to the Blue Jays with David Wells and Graham Lloyd in the Roger Clemens trade prior to the 99 season. He was a key guy off the Yankees bench in 98. In late innings, they used him frequently as a pinch runner. Took advantage of his speed. Base hit center field. And Homer Bush... That's his third run batted in of the game. Doubling 
his output over the first 22. Came into the game with three RBIs. He's driven in three here tonight. Now there's another walk that scored. This has been a game of walks for the Indians. But Homer Bush is starting to come. He's starting to get the feel at the plate now. Not trying to do too much. Pulled an inside pitch before. And now he's got a side wheeler and the ball's breaking away from a little bit. Just look at his head. Went right down his arms and hit the ball in the center field. Nice form. That's a good point. Seven Blue Jays have walked tonight. Four of the seven have come around to score. Mm. He should come work for us. <laughs> 8-1 Toronto. Has that framed up pretty well. Boy, nice job. Hold it still, too. On the seat. Trotway to third. And safe at second is Bush. He beat the throw from Enrique Wilson. An infield hit for Raul Mondesi. Now, this is a broken bat hit. This ball comes off a broken bat. And Ricky Wilson comes up with the ball and goes, catches the ball in a, in a hard spin right at the end of it, throws the second base, and because of pure hustle, Homer Bush hustled Raul Mondesi a base hit. Raul to take him out for dinner after that one. Boy, that was a heck of an effort. So the Blue Jays have again loaded the bases. Carlos Delgado, who homered to right in the fifth inning. Five career grand slams. And for Steve Reed, this will be his 27th pitch this inning. Fouled off back behind third base. 0-1. You know, one of the things you're going to see here is the hot zone, and Delgado likes the ball down, basically. See, from the middle down, and you've got a low ball type pitcher. You've got a submarine or pitcher who's going to try to keep it down and away. And it's down and away where Delgado's hot. Bases loaded for the Blue Jays. Jose Cruz, Jr. on third. Homer Bush out at second. Raul Mondesi is the runner on first. Homer Bush ties his career high with the three RBIs tonight. Delgado into the left field corner and the running catch by Alex Ramirez. Blue Jays add another run. We head to the ninth. Toronto on top, eight to one. One-year-old right-hander Paul Quantrill Comes out to pitch the ninth for the Blue Jays. His 250th appearance in a Blue Jay uniform after the strong outing. David Wells, who will raise his record to 5-1. and one. Wells, in eight innings, allowed only one run on seven hits. Walked three and struck out six. As Jim Fergosi's club looks to put the finishing touches on their victory tonight as Alex Ramirez takes strike one. The executive producers of Fox Sports Center, Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer of Baseball Thursday is Larry Myers. Tonight's game produced by Tom Hewitt, directed by Jeff Mitchell. Our head of field operations, Andrea Jenkins. Thanks as well to Dave Schick, Rick Tugman, Gary Nicholas, Mitch Rubenstein, Bruce Levine, and Ken Breitstein here in Toronto. And we would also like to wish a colleague of ours, Brad Zager, a very happy 22nd birthday. He is all of 22 years old today. Brad handles the graphics on many of our Fox Sports Net telecasts out of the West Coast. Strike call, two and two. Yeah, I'm looking at Quantrill. I'm thinking about Jim Fergosi's bullpen. is starting to get his together just a little bit and Quantrill is a big part of this and what I mean by that remember last year he broke in the offseason prior to last season he broke his leg in a snowmobiling accident the year before he had 82 appearances so from June 15th on last year he had 41 appearances 
was three and two with a low ERA, 3.33, and now he is healthy, and he's an important part of this Blue Jay ball club. And especially if the starters continue to struggle, a guy like Quantrill coming out, ball, out of that bullpen is so important. Fouled off, so the count remains. Two balls, two strikes on Alex Ramirez, who's one for three tonight. Indians, Jeff, we mentioned earlier, coming into the game, 12th in the American League in batting, last in hits, 12th in runs. One run tonight, so they have now scored 17 runs in their last seven games. Very un-Indian-like. Just over two runs per game over their last seven. Hard to believe we're talking about the Indians. Bounce back to the mound. Quantrill, the first, one away. Coming up immediately following the Blue Jays and the Indians, it's the all-new National Sports Report, the nightly show that gives you a complete wrap-up of all the day's sports news. Giants win their fourth in a row over the Mets. NHL playoff action, the Philadelphia Flyers and the Pittsburgh Penguins in Game 5 in the NBA between the Bucks and the Pacers. It's all coming up immediately following the game on the National Sports Report. A little baseball, a little hockey, a little basketball. Big game five between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the New Jersey Devils coming up here in Toronto after the Maple Leafs even that series last night. Einar Diaz has had a busy evening. Cutting it off is the third baseman, Batista. He got him. He crossed in front of Gonzalez, made the throw, and the Indians are down to their final out. Now, this is a very nice play by Batista. We were talking about his conversion to a third base gets that quick break you talk about quick feet in the infield and it takes a good strong arm to throw off balance he's on the wrong foot almost aim in the wrong direction and throws a bullet to first base he's the reason they had to make room for him he's the reason why Tony Fernandez is playing in Japan now here's Cabrera who started the game with a triple to right field he stole home a double steal with Biscell, who stole second. Indians got off to the quick start, but that was their only run. The 0 one from Quantrill. Now one ball, one strike. Well, how many times has it happened, Kenny, where you've got a super matchup and it doesn't necessarily work out that way? But David Wells held up his end. Chuck Finley just was not as sharp. Three walks in a big five-run second inning killed him. And Finley will suffer his first loss as a Cleveland Indian. He had gone 3-0 over his first five starts. David Wells will tie Pedro Martinez and James Baldwin for the American League lead with his fifth victory. Here's Batista at third. And that will do it. A 1-2-3 ninth for Paul Quantrill. And the Blue Jays take the opener of this four-game series as they send the Indians to their fifth consecutive loss. Toronto evens their record at 15 and 15. So an 8-1 victory for Jim Fregoski's Blue Jays. Indians 1-7-0. Blue Jays 8-10-1. A five-run second inning for the Blue Jays. Homer Bush drove in a career-high tying three runs. Jose Cruz drove in two. So that's it from Sky Dome in Toronto as the Blue Jays defeat the Indians by the score of 8-1. to one. Be sure to tune in to FX Baseball Saturday at 1 Eastern as Ken Griffey Jr. and the Cincinnati Reds take on Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals. Baseball Thursday continues next week here on Fox Sports Net. Some of you will see the Mets and the Pirates, others the Rangers and the Angels one week from tonight. So check local listings. Stay right here on Fox Sports Net. The National Sports Report is next in most areas. A disappointing evening for the Indians, while the Blue Jays hammer Cleveland tonight by the score of 8-1. to one. A good start for Toronto to their seven-game homestand. For Jeff Torborg and our entire crew, Kenny Albert saying so long as David Wells wins his fifth from Sky Dome, 8-1. Toronto. Have a good night.